French farmers are currently protesting the government's increasing regulation by blocking off roads in the first French protest in years that doesn't include French women taking their tops off. Representatives for the farmers have said, we know it's a little unorthodox for French protesters to not be topless chicks with phrases painted on their cans, but this was an artistic choice that our movement decided to make. Visibly frustrated France resident Jacques Blanchet has stated, it's like these farmers don't take protesting seriously. They are well aware that it is customary for French protests to include jugs and all I'm seeing is a bunch of dudes with farm equipment. If you want me up front supporting from Purs Row of the protest, give me something that I can put in the spank bank and this pile of manure ain't gonna do it. Even French President Emmanuel Macron chimed in to say, look, I married my teacher and she's like a hundred now, so obviously one of the things I look forward to in this country is frequent protests with jiggling honkers. I'm open to the idea of turning down the globalism, but if these farmers want to talk produce, first we gotta see some melons. And I'm not talking about their beat up farm wives either. Some have noted that it is unfair the amount of media support these topless communist college chick protests receive versus the people who actually provide food for the nation. To which the Minister of Agriculture replied, the eyes want what the eyes want. The boys. It's the boys cast. The lads. It's the boys cast. The dudes. Prepare yourself for boys cast. The bros. It's the boys cast. The homies. It's the boys cast. Here at the Boys Cast, I would just like to address some criticism that was recently received to Danny Polishuk that what? resonated with me personally. Sure. Uh, Danny posted a promo for his show, uh, Bathhouse. They said, no one wants to watch your shit show in which you make the misery of non-Jews. You make light of the misery of non-Jews mm -hmm. after it has come to the fact that you've lied about Epstein for five years saying he's a lone billionaire, not a Mossad <laughs> agent. Everything you say that is irrelevant, Shlomo. Sure. Now, personally... I didn't like the Shlomo remark. To, to me, this is, <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm responding. This is something that resonated with me personally because I actually have known you to bask in the misery of non Jews. Oh, isn't that, yeah, but, I remember yeah, yeah. a time breaking a phone screen and you got like chuckle. I remember a like, glow to your eyes. When the the Gentiles, yeah, the Gentiles are suffering. I remember I told you I'm earlier on today. I said I didn't get a lot of sleep, and Danny goes, <laughs> "You can see she just, just basks I in did. it." Yes, exactly. It's a, everybody who knows Danny is yeah. known, and misery of non Jews is what fuels him. And they he know that it? for the last five years, I have been adamant about the fact that Jeffrey Epstein is a lone <laughs> billionaire. You actually have, yeah. I've been like, dude, there's he's not involved with any organizations. He's a lone billionaire. You've said that to me on multiple occasions and you've also mentioned that when you go to sleep you count miserable non-jews that he does so sometimes people hit the nail on the head with their criticisms he actually does enjoy i never noticed that so much about you but yeah. it is you get you get happy yeah we enjoy it. the the misery it's, of it's the something Gentiles that yeah it does something until you come last night actually on low value mail someone uh joe the lawyer called in about who's an orthodox jew called in about talking about uh fiddler on the roof and then he was like explaining it and he just he kept saying like goy like in the context of like the because they changed remember how some like it hot i said how they changed the trans thing that's just fun for or whatever him, yeah, and then but he's like explaining like how they changed fiddler on the roof because it was a totally different ending as well to like play k and he and then people in the chat were like damn dropping the hard g's huh <laughs> <laughs> you do drop a hard g he calls us gentiles <laughs> he's been known to drop a hard g so i actually appreciate when someone just fucking yeah. pegs him yeah. yeah yeah i mean jeffrey epstein lone wolf that's what just you've been was, saying, just working dude. by himself Guys, subscribe to the Boys Cast. Leave us a review. I've added Pittsburgh to my tour schedule. Going to be in Perrysburg, Columbus, Liberty next week, then Pittsburgh, which is a last minute ad. Dallas, Calgary, Baltimore, Washington, Boston, Winnipeg, Atlanta, San Diego, Houston, and Austin. And that is RyanLongComedy.com for tickets. And Danny has a few dates I as well. I will be in Dallas, Scottsdale, Minneapolis, Edmonton, Vancouver, and some other places. And you can just link down below. Well, the link's not going to be below. DannyPolishuk.com, is it? No, I don't have a website. No, no, no. <laughs> It's uh, link link tree. You get that figured link out. Link tree Danny jokes. Okay, link tree. I don't need a website. Link tree link Danny, Danny, Danny jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't need. That, that is a website. Doesn't need to put money in the hands of a gentile. I actually do have a website that's that's coming up. I lost. I, I let uh, in classic tale as old as time. I had DannyJokes.com. Then I got my credit card. Lost my credit card. They changed the number and then the hosting thing that held my domain. It lapsed because it was the wrong credit card on file and I didn't 
like get the email. Is that classic? I think so. And then I, you, that's how like everybody loses their domains. I feel like I, and then someone just, in, there's like people who just, if there's someone has a domain instantly when they lapse, people will take them just knowing. GoDaddy's on your fucking ass though, dude. You, your domain's like, your domain might expire in 45 <laughs> years. It's like, I get, I honestly, I've had a few domains that I've been trying to get rid of. And it's a GoDaddy. <laughs> they're one step away from showing up at your house and being like, dude, buddy, if yeah. you lose this domain, you're going to be <laughs> fucking dead. Like, yes. I'm letting the domain die. I don't need it. Yeah. GoDaddy is on your ass my friend yeah anyways i i don't know whoever i used maybe i turned off because i was getting so many emails but then i turned off the emails maybe i don't maybe. know but i missed it and so someone now owns danny too busy looking at fucking gentile misery <laughs> gentile misery.com that is actually a domain <laughs> i own but uh <laughs> yes, sir. yes sir yes sir yes sir uh but anyways i lost danny jokes okay we got to talk about something here man vince mcmahon they're trying to do uh, him dirty <laughs> Real dirty. <laughs> the whole thing is just reeks of shit, if the you will. <laughs> Vince McMahon thing is fucking nuts, oh, man. man. I've been knee deep in this stuff, and it's not the only person who's been knee deep in something, buddy. <laughs> the thing is, they're trying to pitch him as like a cock, right? Yeah. So they released all these like text messages. He is a bit of a cock, though. Allegedly, and I see this thing, and I go, "If he's such a cock, why does his son have the biggest elbow in the game?" <laughs> Riff, explain to me that. Yeah. yeah. L- look me, look <laughs> me in the eyes, and tell me that a cock, his son, ends up having the biggest elbow in the game. I don't know. Yes, exactly. I don't know, but uh, yeah, those are some damning text messages, buddy. He goes, I'm a fucking bitch. Vince McMahon had his praying eyes on Brock Lesnar's wife, Sable, that made WWE stars feel uncomfortable, so other people are coming out. Uh, Vince McMahon named black sex toys after black wrestlers. Did they say which wrestlers, White though? sex toys after... I think they named... Did we get the names of the wrestlers? I think that... I, I, the, the question is, did they just name them, like... Is it is the dildy... So he has his dildos. Is, yeah. like, this The Rock, or is, like, Stone Cold, like, this is Stone... Oh, is he bone getting, does he have funny? Yeah, I think they're bo- this yeah, like a- yeah. No, I think he could just name them after the rest of them. If you smell what the cock. <laughs> He's got uh He's cooking. The Hitman. Actually probably not the Hitman because they got bad blood. There's not there must be an Undertaker deal. And it's one of those things where they try to be like, you know, this stuff's never funny and you should never laugh at it. And then they're trying to tell you that he's naming Dillies after black. Well, they're trying to get guys. him on like legitimately on sex trafficking. Sex trafficking is like hard. They're, they're essentially saying he was like Pimp, pimpin or something. Dick Foley, the man out of the cock. Mr. I, Cocko. <laughs> Cocko. Mr. Cocko. You do not want to be on the fucking ground getting Dick Foley. Yeah, you don't. You, Dick Foley. Yeah, I mean, oof, he's been going through it. From the pits of hell. This is, Do you think he does it like that? Like he's sort of playing what with was his other figure? Allegation? Yeah, what was the his other other The cock thing's wild, though, because it just... I, it's, it's weird to believe that it's like, all black this was, cocks. He's like, oh, I wanted them. They're black cocks inside of you, all three of them at the same time. There's a lot of stuff. It's real saying, cuckold, like real like textbook cuckold. Stuff. I don't. They're trying to paint Vince as like they're just saying he's like the cock. Like he just also, his favorite happened, thing is he's dating a girl and he just like yeah yeah bang this other guy and then tell me about it and blah blah, blah. yeah this guy's gonna take it a spin. Oh, I, I'm gonna love that. Like they're really giving him like textbook cuck thing. Um, it's crazy that to be like obviously you know. That and he's still married, right? I don't know what's been going I, I be- on with that. I believe he's yet. still married because his wife was in Trump's cabinet. His wife right. was the one of the secretaries. There's no question that Vince has been boning on the side and doing yeah. all sorts of stuff. And he's obviously like a million people have stories of just like he's the most cutthroat businessman of all oh, time. Brilliant. Yeah. But I really didn't know that after the lights were off, he was just like, yeah, my girl's getting fucked. That's what I need. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was getting her all this cosmetics. Yeah. I wonder if they'll I'm get gonna, But she's suing him. There's, there's no criminal element here. She's just Do you think there's a small him. one that's called John Penis? <laughs> And he says, you can't see it. And you can't see it. And you go, I can see it right there, though. And he goes, no, can't see it. Do you think he retired Dick Benoit? That's the real Ooh. question. Do you think Dick Benoit got retired the after the, the incident? Crippler. <laughs> you don't want Dick Benoit. You do not want to get hit. You don't want the, the crippler up crippler. your pooper. That's the thing. You do not want. The crippler was definitely a, bu- a deli in the A. Aye. How about this? Andre the medium? <laughs> Because he, he sort of flips it a bit. You think Andre the Giant's going to be a big one. But it's just it's Andre the Medium. And you go, oh, because it's medium size. It's like, no, it contacts with the dead because it's so big. It is actually big. And a third, <laughs> a second misdirection. No, no respect for NDAs anymore. Though. That's all I'm taking away from the last 
a little bit. That's um, true. He, I yeah, it's some, that. some NDAs. NDAs are not holding up for the paper NDAs they're worth, are man. Not holding up. No, <laughs> they're not worth the paper that they're being signed on, buddy. No, no. And I guess like now, if you just if you got a chick and you just because it used to be if you shared your chick with your friends, you were just a weird you swinger. No, you were just a weird swinger, dude. Right? You go, eh, hey, why don't you take a spin? Like, I remember, like, my buddy in high school, he was at, like, some, okay. like, after hours at, like, some um, pool place, like, you know, playing pool, billiards hall. And then the guy who owned it, he's like, see that chick over there? And then my buddy was like, yeah. He goes, that's my wife. You want to fuck her? And What'd like, you say? If I had I a dick, I, I would. I wasn't, there, I wasn't there, but and then he's like, you want to fuck her? Do you have a dick maker? <laughs> and my buddy was probably, like, not even 18. And he goes, you want to fuck her? And he goes, yeah. And then he did. Fucker, I did. And no, no, but he did. Be like, well, now that guy sex trafficked his wife. <laughs> like that. I guess that new definition is like he was trafficking her. Hmm. Okay. Because he was just like making his wife available to be like the town bicycle. I guess but the question that's is now sex trafficking. I guess the difference is this the, girl's the, sort of saying like I was going to get want... fired if I didn't or mm, something. Gotcha. I mean, they take the firing at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess do you want to keep your job that badly. I don't know. She's but, like, well, apparently she had like a no show job. I think though. there's three different types of cocks. There's the cocks that are just <laughs> like they don't give a shit about their wife, and they're like, yeah, we want her to bang people. I guess once, well, that one doesn't count because that's just like you're basically living separate lives. Then there's the the probably the two are like you really. Hmm, yeah, I guess there's only one type. Yeah. <laughs> the type that you like it. That's the difference if you like it or not. Yeah, he's a, Vince is a classic cuck. It's they're giving it they're saying cuck classic. They're saying McMahon is like down the middle, textbook, look up cuck in the different just dictionary. A, just a glass of cuck a picture cola of right him there. holding rowdy rod pipe. <laughs> <laughs> It's just endless. <laughs> Darth the Murkaki. Invader. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Darth. What, what was no, it? Invader? Darth, no, Vader, but then I was like, it's better with Darth. Vader's not bad. Cock Lesnar? That could Cock be okay, Lesnar, though. Yeah. Most of them are cock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and coincidentally, a lot of wrestlers whose names rhyme with cock. <laughs> Do you think that what came first? That's the question. Do you think he had the dillies and then he uh, got the wrestlers after? I bet he has like some weird storylines because apparently he's the one who just gives everybody their personas. He goes, like, this is who you are. Like, well, some of them came with their personas. Some of them came, but I guess he's the one who like makes up. Like he did the Undertaker. They have writers and stuff too, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he's the final. Bu- call yeah, I don't for know if sure. that's maybe revisionist where people go like there were a bunch of writers, but then the, like the. Do you think he just like com- Undertaker says he's like yeah it was like it was uh, he just said you're the Undertaker. He just comes into the room, but maybe there's a, a bunch of people who are like yeah I mean no it was six of us and then he just takes credit for it. He's taking credit for it when really he just shows up to the room once a thing and he comes up. What are you guys working on? He was like I was thinking maybe they bang Trish. <laughs> <laughs> they, they go what? That doesn't really work with their storyline. Ah, I think you're going to make it work. There was a video actually going around from uh, WWE though with him and Stephanie McMahon mm-hmm. and she's essentially this whole video of her, it was like a hit or whatever for like actual like TV but then how she's like, you pass me around and people did whatever they wanted with me and it's dis- I'm disgusted and you're like holy shit, this is the actual His daughter. daughter? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> it's dirty. He's a fucking dirty dog. Dirty eh? dog, Vince. He's it's been looking interesting rough, dude. You see him at the How end? long ago was all this stuff? Because that's the big question. Like, I don't has he been that. a dirty dog into his like sixties and seventies? Oh hell yeah! Because I, I mean, I saw. You think that he might let up on this stuff, especially when it's like a publicly traded company and all that sort of well, stuff? You think that he would be less of a dirty dog? I guess he doesn't. Well, that's why he had to, I, I guess, uh, give it up because now he's like he's not even on the board anymore. Oh, they, he, they're he, he's nothing. Away he's from this he's, stuff. he's gone. He's like totally. But uh, I remember on Rogan, Rogan was like, look at him. At like in his seventies, I don't know how old he is right now. He must be like, how old is he right now? But in his in uh, in his seventies, he was like he looked amazing. Yeah, he's seventy eight. So I guess like you know at seventy two, he looked incredible. But recently there was that thing with him and the Undertaker where they were somewhere in like Dubai and he looked really bad. Like, do you think like, the texts like are real? Catching up with him. That it's hard to verify text, man. It's the easiest thing in the world to just put is. a text on a thing, right? I know they're releasing them as official text, but it's not. Coming I mean, from- if you have the phone, that would be, I guess, a hard thing to fake because, like, if you go click on the info and that phone number belongs to Vince McMahon, you go, okay, well, these texts came from here. I don't think you could fake that. Well, but we're just screenshots. Seeing screenshots. Are, yeah, screenshots are incredibly easily faked. Fuck so yeah. I don't know. So it'll all come out, but I, it's also crazy, just like to think that. Um, w- because all the a lot of the wrestlers, even when we're watching, the oh Fox no, he got divorced like two years ago. Oh, so he maybe his cock so, stuff so Linda's turned had up a, to eleven. Linda had enough. Linda McMahon finally had enough. Fuck. She, she said enough was enough. Maybe that's why he wanted her on the Trump campaign. She wanted Vince. That would have been the final bone if Trump right. gets a piece. Oh. 
That would have yeah, fucking been, like, been the. Oh, that's the ultimate cuck. The <laughs> president's fucking your wife. That's the ultimate for him, oh man. He would have loved that. You can't get cucked more than that, <laughs> unless it's like Obama. I guess Obama fucking your wife is like the pinnacle of cuckdom. <laughs> that's got to be the you highest cuck. Black president with that huge black cock fucking my wife. Oh my god. <laughs> you think Don't Obama's packing? Most powerful man in the world. <laughs> I'm a fucking mere wrestler. <laughs> I'm a scum. I run a fucking fake sports company. <laughs> Nothing. Do you think he gets? He goes. Tell me the fucking wrestling's fake. <laughs> tell me it's fake. Tell me it's fake. Tell me your orgasms are fake and your wrestling's fake. And the only time you have real co- orgasms is when you fuck a real athlete. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Man. So it's also crazy just the amount that the wrestlers have like these wild lives and they're just like. And he used to. One thing that he used to do that's crazy is he would write their storylines for real life in so it's like a guy and a girl would be like in a fight i think it was the ultimate warrior and stuff like that and they'd yeah. be like in a fight with their wife and then he would like get the writers to write in that they're in a fight and then uh have like another wrestler be like cheating on them and then he'd be like oh we're gonna write that in it was like he's like toying with them almost yeah, oh, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah, i didn't cool. know that it was sexual for him though that that's the question is he, was he liking to, that to, yeah maybe was that doing it for him possibly to make the wrestlers do affairs and storylines and then when they're like yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Also, like, crazy is just like thinking about people. You know, like how in, on <laughs> Halloween when you see couples arguing, it's like the biggest fight or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when you see like be, like a two people in a big fight and the guy's still in his Ultimate Warrior outfit, like yelling and screaming, <laughs> it's just like so, so so crazy about that. Yeah, you ever been in a Halloween fight? Uh, no. I had no. the one when it was awkward because we're yelling and screaming at each other, and I'm dressed as Ray Rice and she's dressed up <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and she's saying, "Give those kids back their candy." Wait, that you like, I said, "I spent the entire night looting. <laughs> this is my candy." Ray Rice is better than if you're just like a banana, <laughs> trying to dress down your chick as a banana. <laughs> yeah, 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 tough, <laughs> tough look. That's uh, fucking nuts, though, man. Uh, Jordan Peterson reposted our video. Nice. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking to uh, Michaela the other day, too, and I was almost, because her and Chris sent me their energy drinks, I almost was asking about the Jordan Peterson thing, but I fucking hate asking people for anything, man. Yeah, that's one of those ones where I it's, fucking, it's my least favorite thing to do is having to ask anyone Just for tell anything. her we really want, I know, me too. Just tell her <laughs> we really want three P, buy three P suits, but the only way we're going to do it is once... JVP. I know I might put out some feelers in the fucking JP community. We know a bunch of people to film with him. We know all the people. He seems to keep reposting our videos. He's been wild on socials with this stuff, though. Oh, yeah. Someone asked him, he was like, what's the most thing that you get in trouble for? And he re-quote tweeted and he said, uh, saying fat chick shouldn't be on magazines. <laughs> yeah. I was like, fuck yeah. yeah. He's like responding to Let's just like, go. like those uh, just like generic like content, like kind of like, oh, what's a weird thing you from just like some <laughs> random like internet hall of Putting fame? beasts on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're not probably shouldn't. He responded to ours saying he's the man for the job. Um, <laughs> The, to, oh, for the, yeah, yeah. to be the president of uh, the Sports swimsuit Illustrated. <laughs> Sports, Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. Unfortunately, it's too far gone for that. So the media has been melting down. A lot of articles have been coming out recently since we've been we've been sort of uh, hypothesizing this. The media is melting down. Neither billionaires, journalists can uh, to st- can stop it. Oh, you love it. billionaires now, huh? Media, uh, uh, left wing <laughs> media. You're loving billionaires. Please save us, billionaires. You're our only hope. Please, billionaires. Yeah, literally. <sighs> They've tried everything under the sun other than telling the truth. Yeah. They're just like, legitimately, they're just like, what if we just stopped lying for a second? They go, no, I'm thinking this billionaire thing might have some legs. Well, if they stop lying, then they're Twitter. Then you go, you're just a person on Twitter <laughs> if you stop lying and you stop editorializing and like kind of trying to put a narrative forward. Then you're just a person on Twitter now. There's a big difference between a narrative forward and just like outright fucking... I guess like uh, leaving out key piece of information. Yes, of course. Did you see the thing that uh, I think Joe Rogan yeah, posted? Yeah, yeah, with, uh, with but the it's Trump. like. Yeah, basically the protesters uh, outside of Trump's court case, there was every single media publication posted this thing of like two guys holding like Trump signs protesting. And then if you zoomed out the actual picture, it was it was like a fucking sketch, dude. Yeah, it was it was like a, it looked like a film, like a production. It was 85 j- journalists with holding their cameras and then two guys standing two there crackpots putting on a show. Yep. And most likely, they were fucking working with the journalists. Like, it seems like they brought him in. I mean, that's very easy. Like, if you have an idea, a good eye for, like, what's going to do numbers, kind of, like, uh, wise in terms of, like, articles, you just be like, yeah, we just, like, get two guys, 100 bucks a piece. Two guys. Give them a sign, pop them out there, and, like, or we can wait all day and maybe something happens. 
I know it's but like <laughs> it's fucking wild. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, the mask is off. They said, unfortunately, it seems no category of owner is able to salvage the media business in decline with business models stuck in the past and editorial models built for a world before Facebook. So they're just sort of blaming everything on the internet, yeah. which is like, yes, there's a part of it to that, but it's like a part of it is obviously you turned all these publications into like ideological propaganda machines. For sure. And pr that was only in style for like a short period of time. And then you hired so many people. And I think that became such the culture that you can't get rid of them. And you were pretending like you weren't that too like at least like fox never really pretended like they weren't that they just fox is like we're fox and that's what we are we're the right way these, yeah these were like oh we're we're new york times or whatever we're kind of unbiased and then they're like oh no we're actually really biased and then yeah but it's not yeah they no, go, no love loss for journalists uh the, i saw some there's some pretty funny articles that they're like posted uh so they had one recently this is a per I just I just had a couple articles of like the stuff type of stuff that they're posting. It's like to, it's a guy being eight hundred pounds and uh, going to the doctor, and the doctor is like, obviously, you probably eat a little less. He goes, well, that's not an option. So what are we thinking? <laughs> yeah, that's else. the new. That's the blog sphere right now. You know what I mean? You go. They come in. They go. Obviously, like first and foremost, probably just like stop actually lying. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe just tell the truth. Maybe there is a market for that. I I'll tell you, uh, there's so many things, and we're gonna talk about the oh, Paris, Paris thing in a little gone. bit. Getting to the bottom of what actually happened was a fucking nightmare. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they're too far gone. You're like the business model has changed so much. Like a lot of these, you know, new stuff. You see, like the LA Times, they're like, yeah, we laid off. 20% of our thing and that was 20% of our newsroom and that was like 200 people and you're like you guys have a thousand people what or whatever like whatever the number what is they I do exactly it's this is very much like the when you when you only have a hammer everything's a nail right? they probably have like, like yeah I, they, I can only do one week a month because of my anxiety or, or not even that but <laughs> half, the, just like, half the things on fucking mental disability they're like there just might not be that much news <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you. It's just like you don't need uh, ten thousand journalists in America. <laughs> it's cranking out the same fucking piece. Like, Dribble, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's but, 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 yeah. obviously that's a part of it. But I think it's uh, it, it, it's probably fifty percent the media, the changing landscape, and fifty percent that they're no one's buying what they're selling. Yeah. But I think that you can neutralize that no one's buying what they're selling because there's plenty of publications that are doing well. Um, but they yeah, go, I don't know. Who here's an article. Really, yeah. To beat Trump, we need to know why Americans keep voting for him. Psycholo psychologists may have the answer. So Trump was president in 2020. It is now 20, right? He 24. He got voted in 2016. No, no, 2016 to 2020. It is now 2024. Yep, correct. <laughs> Just looked at the time. Yep. <laughs> So that's eight years ago. Yeah. S still no fucking still, still, clue. Yeah, the jury's out. They go, <laughs> we're almost... If we could just reach our subscriber goal, we might be able to get to the bottom of this. The jury's out. My friend, this is eight years ago the man got elected. And they go... And then he's going into this new election. They go, they have no fucking clue. <laughs> they have to, and they hire a psychologist. They go, the only, and they, you go, what about asking them? They go, I'm thinking this psychologist is the only answer. You go, if only there was a way for us to know. And they're all just like, well, the reason is, just, yeah. I'm thinking, <laughs> if only, if only there was possibly a reason that we could possibly get in the minds, like as if they're just like this different species of human. It's like half the country that posts their thoughts every day. They'll tell you. Yeah. How do, you yeah. know, how do you know why someone's voting for Trump? They'll tell you. Yeah, they'll tell you. Also, you, you know, just they, they're probably best off waiting until this next election. You imagine, go, I don't like Biden. Imagine they go, we figured out the reason. This is the reason that he <laughs> wins again. They're like, fuck. It wasn't that. They go, I, I'm really not liking Biden. You go, okay, it's not that. <laughs> Obviously, it's not that. So it's like, we're worried about his cognitive <laughs> abilities to, and that he might die while the president goes, nah, it's not that. It's, it's definitely nothing to do with that. Psychology doesn't really answer <laughs> that problem. Yeah, yeah you so. go, this border thing's really becoming a problem for us. You go, it's not the border. It's definitely not. Thank you for your input, mm, but it's that not. Could be a new that's not the reason you like him. In the future, the psychology of the border. <laughs> that might be a, maybe psychology of immigration. Like, there's definitely people in, like, uh, faculty 
faculties, their wheels are spinning, being like, how can we like make a new <laughs> thing? Is is psychology uh-huh. of immigration a thing that could maybe I could spend the next eight years working I can on? Maybe come up with some type of hypothesis to explain this sort. crazy phenomenon. Yeah, you go. Know what it is? It's your girlfriend saying that she thinks a guy's hot and you won't accept the and you're like, no, you don't actually think he's hot. You just like him for the. <laughs> you're trying to no, actually, you don't think that. No, sorry, Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> is not hot. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He just is rich. Uh, yeah, you're trying to explain. No, the only reason you think that is because he was nice to him. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can't can't accept the answer. No, no. The the journalists are fucked though. And TDS I, never gets fucking old, man. It's always funny. <laughs> just being like, this is the fucking writer for the Guardian, and they go write an article on why people like Trump, and you go, I mean, we're gonna fucking call in some experts here because I'm fucking drawing a blank, <laughs> pal. You, you've been covering the- this for eight years. You have no idea why. Uh, not yeah, at the nothing. slightest clue. Maybe because they're over in England with the Guardian. Maybe they haven't come over here, so they're not quite aware. But yeah, I don't. Uh... You go. I think it's this. Border Do we have to issue go through this again. We got to go through this whole thing just again, <laughs> right? Like this is what it, it seems like. We've been like, surely we're not going to have to go through this all again. Biden's really fucking on that border shit. Eh? He's trying to shut down. He's really. Uh... It seems like a losing platform. Well, they were kind of saying there no was going to be board with that business. No, and they were kind of saying there was going to be this like um, civil. Everybody's saying civil war because the states yeah, were no. going against the federal government, and the federal government's like let them in, and then and then Biden's like I have actually been very strong, and I have a bill that I have forward to uh, minimize it. And like apparently the first day he was in office, January twentieth, twenty twenty, he passed like this like just undoing any of the Trump border stuff. Like that was his like first thing he did. He was kind of was like let's let's, one, let's, yeah. let's well, it's just as you you elected me and you elected me to be not Trump, so then you go let's undo all the stuff he did, right? Cuz that's like what you do day one. You go let's undo all this shit. Oh, they cut they're like we're we're getting rid of the border guards, we're getting rid of the barbed wire. He oh. said I don't know if you saw the new law that he passed, but he said the border guards aren't allowed to have barbed wire tattoos. What? <laughs> he said no barbed wire anywhere. I guess in no millen- no millennial <laughs> border guards then and you can't, <laughs> and you can't even have isn't that more of a gen z thing or gen nah, x sorry uh i don't know i, I feel like barbed my wire roommate is gen my x. roommate in college well there was uh the movie barbed wire with pamela anderson mm-hmm. and then that's she, banned as well and then she <laughs> had the tattoo and then that somehow popularized the barbed wire tattoo which last i had a friend in college it was a bad tattoo a guelph who had the, bar, the barbed wire chinese, still has the barbed wire barbed wire and chinese <laughs> symbols were fucking cooking i think for yeah chinese symbols tramp stamps i think every uh girl i know who has a tramp stamp has had it like covered up with something else but you still have the tramp stamp did you ever get a btc tramp stamp (laughs) (laughs) no just a cum dumpster with an arrow that's (laughs) yeah yeah that's that's the one i'm getting border guards aren't allowed to have barbed wire tattoos no new rule yeah but anyways we're still gonna need a psychologist to figure out what might be thinking Sometimes people are just going through it. You get down and you might not realize that how that's affected your life. So Talkspace is here to help. If you want to talk to a therapist, you're not sure how to get started. Talkspace makes it easy to find a therapist. It's convenient. You meet online at home, wherever you're most comfortable. And Talkspace can make a huge difference in your life. Talkspace is affordable. It's accessible. You might think seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist will be helpful, but you don't actually have the time. You don't think you can afford them. We'll try Talkspace. Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made it easy to get the help you need, accessible and affordable. And sometimes people are going to wait until something bad happens to talk to a therapist. You don't have to wait. You can get a therapist today through Talkspace. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find the tools to cope in difficult times, be a guiding light. So getting started is the important part. Talkspace makes it easy and affordable. Incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home. No need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, line up child care in order to have your sessions it's mental health care made easy Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end bank grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations as a listener of this podcast you're going to get $80 off your first month when you try Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash boyscast to match with your licensed therapist today go to Talkspace.com slash boyscast show your support of the show Talkspace.com slash boyscast Boys cast. The best way to learn a language is immersion. Living where the language is spoken, using it every day, but that's on the cards for everyone uh-uh. and this year. So you can still learn a language the second best way, and that's with Babbel. Hold on. Play the ding. Oh, crap. Play it. 
<laughs> there we go. That's the sound we all know and love from Babbel. As many people who uh, watch the show know, I have used Babbel myself, trying to learn a little Russian, polish up on the old Ruski. Uh, mostly because I have some uh, old my grandmother. That's pretty much all she speaks. And uh, so I've been using it, and it's great. Like, for, if any of you who have tried it know, but if you don't, it just it breaks it down. It has these little games, little kind of exercises. You can do it for five minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, whatever you want, and it keeps you on track, and it's a great way to learn a language. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors. Waste hours on an app that don't even really help you speak the language. Babbel has quick 10-minute lessons handcrafted by over 200 languages learning experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. They got more than 16 million subscriptions sold, plus all of Babbel's 14 award-winning language courses are backed by 20-day money-back guarantee. Here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners. That is, right now, you get 50% off a one-time payment for a lifetime Babbel subscription. Only for the boys cast listeners here. They're not messing around. This isn't for every common joy off the street. Babbel.com slash boys cast. 50% off at Babbel.com slash boys cast. That is B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash boys cast. Rules and restrictions may apply. <laughs> Here's another one that they came up with last week. Why are robots so white? Yeah. So is, appa- uh, apparently the big thing is the robot's been coming in there listening to Sweet Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> and these kids can't learn from the robots yeah. because the, the guy's got a beer in the air and he goes, ba with a ba da bang da bang <laughs> Anybody want some mayonnaise sandwiches? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Where <laughs> they want the robots to be coming and break dancing. Yeah, and I don't... Uh, I wonder if there's some... I know that they Excuse can... Excuse just- me! <laughs> The pronouns, the robots. How do you know the robots are too white? The fucking first one's been telling me his pronouns all day. <laughs> it's row and bot. It's been pro fucking. Tell, it's been having climate change anxiety this fucking day all. Yeah, I gotta stop making with these robots so white. Um. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know why. Do they have? There's no black robots. Oh, the big. I actually saw Elon Musk posted like two days ago. He's with his robot, and the one was black. It kind of has like a visor for. Yeah. A face. Why can't it just be white and black? I think the I think, I think one of the reasons is uh, that you can see things better on white. Yeah, but they have some black. But on there is, I think the people are complaining that they're just like we don't want not any enough. white. Well, they're saying yeah, well, they're we sort of saying all that, black. Well, they're saying that they're teaching uh, kids that have autism, and they're saying there's a disproportional amount from uh, people of color that have autism, and they have to learn from these fucking white robots. <laughs> Who is has white robot teachers? They're right saying now. it's the biases of the people. But anyways, this <laughs> yeah, is yeah. this is the kind of stuff that they're pumping yeah, out, of right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, honestly, if you're working in a, like a newsroom, this is probably cutting edge shit for them. They go, okay, it's like, what do you got? Uh, something about Trump and blah, blah, blah. Trump, no, no, Eugene no, I'm Carroll, not listening. Trump, Biden, border Trump goes, white robots. You go, holy fucking who shit. Who the fuck are you, dude? <laughs> you go, who is this guy? He's just the janitor. Yeah, he goes, the janitor. Well, you're fucking promoted, pal. <laughs> yeah, he goes, it's like Goodwill Hunting. They just put up this like, who can come up with the newest, just like trendiest article and just leaves it on the board. And then someone comes back in the morning and says, why, why are robots white? You go, who fucking wrote this? <laughs> He's the janitor. Yeah, the, the janitor. Block. <laughs> the block. Hey, the robots are so white. Yeah, the, the robots are too white. <laughs> No representation in robots. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> you go, Horatio has been fucking cranking out hits all day. What the fuck are you guys doing? Go, dog, I just like to be janitor. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to. He's, he has a, he has a, I've got a nice go life. Fucking being journalist is embarrassing, dog. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I don't want anything to do with this fucking journalism. I love though that now, like, pretty much, if you're a journalist, you can only tell other journalists you're a journalist. Otherwise, like, it's legit. Like, yeah, being a journalist is a crappy career, uh, man. Such, and it really is one of those things where, you know, probably 20 years ago, it was a real career path blah 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 and then now you're like it, it's become one of those things where you're like yeah maybe five people will be you see the video Ch- Taylor, uh, Che's girlfriend Taylor Lorenz posted <laughs> <laughs> which one it's hard to keep up <laughs> she posted a big one being like just kind of saying the same stuff as this like all the blogs are going oh yeah yeah but like the that. LA Times yeah yeah and it was just like you know we're in like a crisis she goes news is gonna not exist as you know it and you're like most people probably think that's a good thing for news to not exist as you know it you really have to triangulate you know what I was gonna move I was gonna talk about this later but 
the let's just talk about the Paris farmers thing for a second because okay. in the context of the blog thing I'm telling you my friend it was maybe the most hard thing to figure out what's going on you really have to triangulate like to find out what's actually going on because here's the thing uh-huh a part of this is what I think okay from looking at 10 different things that are telling me 10 different things it seems like the farmers who are kind of doing their own Canadian trucker thing but French you know yeah, what I mean yeah. Yeah, we have had enough uh, and they're these baguettes are not going to grow themselves that's kind of what they're saying right and basically a lot of it is it seems to me that the government of Germany France Belgium have all put on these like aggressive restrictions and it's all part of their like net zero climate policy yes. right yeah, that's what it sounds like yeah from the net zero climate policy and they're essentially eliminating a tax break on diesel because part of this like sort of wef mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. they think like diesel is a bad energy source right right so they just like they just kind of like went hard on all this stuff like really too quick right and the farmers have had enough is what it sounds like simple as that. There was like a big, because they make these subsidies. And, they, and they're getting less subsidies. I think that's another thing. Yes, but the, 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 I think when you phrase it as a subsidy thing, it's kind of, it, it presents it as like, oh, they're just taking away a subsidy. But the problem is when they do these big subsidies, you sort of have to commit to them for a while because people have to build infrastructure Yeah, yeah for sure. Them, they have you know to switch I mean? over to them. Yes, like, they switch over. They build their whole new machines. They kind of like, okay, stop using this. They start using this. They plant different crops. They sort of, you incentivize things so if you if you do all that stuff and then you take it away you kind of like but the problem the thing, i think right? is that sometimes the economics of them like in canada with dairy well that's a big law well, the, the dairy like, they go the like lobby issue yeah but they go like there's the demand for dairy versus the supply is so off kilter that like they essentially have the government has to be like okay we'll just buy your dairy from you at but that's price. not what's happening yeah, yeah i don't know what the, yeah, yeah the canadian dairy thing like there's a lot of there's a lot of uh stuff where it is just like the lobby fight fights so hard for them to um like prop up an industry mm -hmm. and that's a big you know they just have big you know fucking boys in washington right yeah, yeah. but the or, in or i mean they even do commercials like if you think about it, like remember the milk camp and they got milk yeah or like eggs like just the fact that there were just commercials for eggs paid for by the government but it was just like it wasn't it's was just like not a brand yeah, that it's is just true. eggs. It's sort of a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think of that. It's like there's commercials for eggs. Yeah, it's not. That's a pretty good point, though. You see, like a commercial for like burgers. Yeah, it's not for burgers. Kind. Beef. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever. It's just like, is there any kind of beef? No, no. Just beef. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Iced tea. Yeah, I should, just drink. Yeah, everyone beef. should drink iced tea. The iced tea lobby. <laughs> fucking you go. Which brand? You go. They're all good. Yeah, they're all good. We, we love them all. Tea. We don't discriminate over here. Just <laughs> as long as you support your local iced tea sales. Just have an egg. Yes, it is sort of an interesting. Thing thing yeah, to think just, about just eat eggs and then there was like the, but they had to counter because everybody's like eggs are bad and they're like okay so bad. so what i after you looking at it you kind of came to a somewhat of a similar conclusion that kind a lot of. of this stuff has to do with the global and then because of that they were like letting in ukraine imports to her uh too cheap and it was sort of a lot of these yeah, they factors want more were, protectionism okay, and sure which is common but a lot of it kind of has to do with the global warming stuff and what if you look at the articles, news uh, clippings, if you watch the videos, not a single article or news thing will mention the net zero or the like uh, the climate policies. They some of them are even uh, are promoting this as like, oh, the farmers are saying we demand a living wage. Right. Like the, some of them are That's saying one of the ones I saw. Yeah. Yeah, and you're just like. It's such an in, and I guess it's happening in a different part of the world. So people, you can just say anything, but it's like. They're they're like actively uh, giving you disinformation about what's happening. Yeah, like to use their terms, it's yeah. like literally. I try to figure out what's happening. If you, it's like if you, it's kind of like the Trump thing. If you asked one of these guys, they're just like, yeah, it's like basically because of all this fucking like globalism shit. They're uh, they're turning the subsidies down because for global warming stuff, right, and yeah. shit like that. And then if you talk to the news, they're just like. Um, you know, people need a living wage. And yeah, well, they play the like, angle. There's, you know, there could be multiple things. They won't things mention true. it because they, yeah, because then be, they have to be against it. Exactly. Yeah. Then there could be multiple things about it true at the same time, and it's just uh, a, like lying by omission, essentially, where they go like, yeah, it's a part of it. We're just gonna keep that out of it, out of our articles. We're not gonna mention it. So, dude, it's yeah, it's like uh, you get fired from work and you don't mention that it was because you stole. <laughs> it's like you, you're like they fired no, you go, from yeah, work. Piece, you, stuff kept get going missing. At work, so then a few of us got fired. Yeah, they don't even they and don't you know, even what, have it what do you in mean the, got anywhere missing? near there. <laughs> you go, I actually, so I'm trying to like I'm reading about this thing, and I'm like, the farmers are pretty pretty clear. Like we've had it up to here with we the are. globalist <laughs> agenda. 
And it's like kind of on the truckers thing, but it's like they're just like reporting wrong. Yeah. It's like yeah. that's not what they're saying. No. Well, they're a bunch of liars. It would be like if you saw girls protesting for like it is funny to think too because they have the girls that are protesting for blocking roads for global warming and then there's people blocking roads because of the global warming policies. Yeah. So you basically have like two people you go if you fucking if you support global warming you're going to block the roads if you don't support <laughs> yeah. like roads are getting roads blocked. Get blocked. Yeah, roads are getting blocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <if> you- <laughs> <laughs> that Regardless. how crazy is that is like two different protests blocking the road and you go one because like they're using diesel and one because they're not using enough diesel <laughs> they're trying to stop and diesel. then they both meet at the louvre to splash <laughs> fucking soup on the mona lisa <laughs> that's the truckers need to start splashing i think soup. they did i think there was there was a uh, they're dumping manure everywhere no but oh yeah that sucks but uh the mona lisa got some soup splashed on it this week and i think it was for like some sort of living because you think it was for climate and then it actually wasn't a climate thing it was for like some sort of living wage thing but i don't think it was for the farmers i think it was just in general yeah they're definitely making a mockery Dude, i'm serious like, they make it very difficult to get a if i'm like the the head of security at any major museum i'm like hey guys just number one uh nobody's allowed to bring soup in to the museum no soup coming into the museum because all that happens is you can <laughs> fucking splash on definitely it. shut down the yeah, soup yeah, store yeah, hey the yeah, just if we're going through bags and people have like you know <laughs> uh bowls of soup thermos full of soup thermos yeah. full of soup uh cans full of soup anything that you might think is a soup do you think that you'd have ever a truck like you have basically one of the farmers and one of the protesters they're both like going to grab soup and spill it at the same time and they just sort of just stop and- <laughs> no they do the thing uh the new year's like you know the new year's eve toast where they lock the arms for the champagne they do that and they go ah one two three and they both throw their soup <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, why are you throwing soup? Uh, too much diesel. Why are yeah, you throwing you, soup? <laughs> and just trying yeah, to stop and diesel. And everybody's like, get in line. Like, the whole line for the Mona Lisa now is not even to, like, look at it. It's just to toss soup on hey, it. Hey, 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 The more diesel lights over there, you're in the not enough diesel lights. They should do, like, a, you know those smash rooms or whatever where you can destroy things? <laughs> okay. Just, like, a replica museum where yeah, you can just, yeah. like, you walk in and there's just vats of soup. <laughs> just grab, like, a little jug. Just like a rage room. Just, <laughs> yeah, a rage, rage room, room. But, but it's, like, a museum soup room. They have sort of fake Mona Lisa. And you yeah. get to go throw <laughs> soup at it. Soup on it. <laughs> simulation protest. Yeah. Do you think they have a simulation protest game where you get probably, to the- <laughs> and you get the extra points if you block oh. off the Mona Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's who can <laughs> fully cover the Mona, fully ruin the Mona Lisa. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. But yeah, there's there they have the literally opposite protests going on in the same country <laughs> using the same techniques. <laughs> You go, wow, you can't, hey, don't try to drive down, uh, don't try to drive down uh, Pierre Street, <laughs> because, Pierre Street. oh yeah, the anti-climate protests are blocking that one. Oh, don't try to drive down Jacques Street, because the uh, climate... <laughs> it's Rue Jacques, Ryan. <laughs> Rue Jacques. You can't fucking drive anywhere in that country. Girls are fucking walking around with their titties everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you. I've so been they should t- just all agree. Why don't we just stop blocking every road and go back to normal? How about that? It's easy for you to say from your fucking white castle. <laughs> or whatever. A white <laughs> robot castle. White robot castle perched up right there. But people, farmers, don't have it so easy. They got to dump manure everywhere. Well, I can I can sort of understand that if you're a farmer and you're just like, hey, you built this whole thing, and then like Macron goes to his like W uh, E F uh, Cro- overlords, pedophile orgies. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're not doing that anymore. Also, with that farmer stuff, it's like you're getting these promises from a previous government, and then uh, you know, like new government comes in and go, well, yeah, that was them, and we're not doing that. So sorry. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, these are kind of our lives. I think they sort of just think that they can more just like push it and push it, and then I guess people sort of had enough or whatever. Yeah. But. <clears throat> It is like uh, it is very similar to the trucker thing. It kind of seems like they're using all sort of the same techniques. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess they saw that it, it worked, is sort of funny that. dropping off piles of manure at the government offices. <laughs> it's sort of a funny technique. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or you could do the Italian method where they just blow shit up. They'll just leave bombs there. That's what they do in Italy. They'll yeah, just bomb. When I was in Naples, like a week after I left Naples, there's just like an explosion at the tax office. Really? Yeah, because that's what they feel about taxes. Who did that? The mob. The mob says what? This was in Naples. Ah, uh, they just you know they get beef with political Florida. Fr- 
No, right, oh, right, this right. is in Italy. Uh, no, in Italy because there's like that's mm. like the second Naples. Uh, uh, the second Naples. Naples won technically, but uh, they uh, <laughs> they just have mad beef because they're a power struggle essentially between the mob and the actual government to really? be who's, who's the most powerful. And then there's like, yeah, we'll just blow up your fucking. Here's a little bomb at the tax office. Hmm. Enjoy. Well, I'll tell you. It was hard to get the info on that. That was yeah. my hypothesis after trying to find that. And so if there was one news station that was just like, you know what? We're just going to sort of tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. Probably be a lot better than what that they got going on That is the one thing that I wonder, because a lot of people say that, and I do wonder if there's... Because I know some... They can't all do that, but the one, one of them can. Yeah, but I, I the problem is, I guess, then they're not... Because people do still want to know what's going on. But it's like, it's the if it bleeds, it leads kind of I know if it bleeds, where they it go, leads. Where they, they go, okay, well, we're up against someone who's covering like this thing that actually wasn't that big of a story, but they're manufacturing it into the Obviously, black wrestlers over black dillies does better than just saying like Vince is in trouble or the like you know <laughs> you remember there was a for a moment during the Trump era when there was so much negativity and then everybody's like why can't there be like a news source where we just say the, the good things that are happening you know instead of just being all the bad things no one like, wants to watch that nobody wants <laughs> tune in they go, there's no hungry people anymore you go great I don't care that's local news where you go oh Martha baked had her pie off of course but even if you want to do macro you go well, yeah there's like we've eliminated global hunger which we have like essentially like global hunger like that shit where we saw those commercials when you were a kid where the kids with the flies like I don't think that exists I'm anymore definitely looking eliminated your hunger <laughs> I don't think that exists anymore you know like global hunger like it's pretty much eradicated it's but not as bad I think it's uh, from what I understand pretty much I don't think there's like well, you actual... can say that from your white tower <laughs> There's probably some sipping on my gravy, but it's probably not the same. But I think there is some, or maybe some, but it's like mostly eradicated, from what I understand. But okay. if, if that was the news, people would be like, "Yeah, I don't know. It's not really a story." Do you think it was the egg commercials that had something to do with that? Uh, that <laughs> fucking powerful egg lobby. <laughs> There is a lot of weird stuff going on right now. I don't know if you saw the furry stuff. I did see the furry stuff. Yeah, that's... Uh, so th this is kind of... There was kind of a thing before. Freaks? <laughs> So you're you don't want the furries after you, though. The furries are an organized bunch. It, well, the reason it's funny is because of the... So basically, there's all these furries that keep doing these, like, demonstrations and uh, meetups at their school or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's this guy, um, Humphreys, who's... Do you know what Humphreys does? He's, no. like, the main guy that's sort of opposing it, but I think he's sort of, like, find yeah, out... I think he works at the school or something. He I works at the school or something? He just works... Or, or like, he's, he's basically, like, like local, Hank Hill. Or he's, like, a local politician or something like that. Yeah, he's some, he's some like, local guy, but he's basically, you know, uh, Hank Hill, mm -hmm. and he comes in... Tell you what! And there's all these furries, and he's just like, what in tarnation? Yeah, this is in, this is in Oklahoma. <laughs> so this guy, it's a clash of, like... Yeah, Republican Justin Humphrey, uh, he's uh, one Oklahoma lawmaker. He's, I think... A I believe he's a congressman. So this guy wants to put a stop to this, and he goes, he wants to ban students who report to be imaginary animals, and he's kind of saying uh, he's had enough, but he's doing all these interviews. And it's funny, because he's like straight up like red-blooded football-watching man, and, and, and they're just like, <laughs> what do you have a problem with the furry stuff? And he's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> he goes, when I was in school, the only furry was the goddamn football team's mascot, and he got so much sniz, he didn't know what to do with himself now the gay <laughs> yeah you go what's this uh, what's this mascot parade going on <laughs> for what the fuck like <laughs> yeah he's yeah, literally yeah. having a conniption over the whole yeah, thing right because yeah, he's, yeah. he's like he's not of this new world right nah, i don't know yeah <laughs> And it's Oklahoma, too. Oklahoma, yeah. He goes, it's Oklahoma, not Oklahoma, all right? <laughs> and <they're g> <laughs> I was low hanging fruit, but... <laughs> that wasn't bad. That was not bad. <laughs> Oklahoma, no, Oklahoma, no gay shit. <laughs> These guys are fucking. These guys had it up to here, man. This guy's coming home from work, and his wife's like, "How is your day?" And you should like, "Don't get me fucking started." <laughs> What's this feather on your briefcase? He's like, <laughs> I will hit you. <laughs> don't make me throw hands now, Deborah. Don't, don't make me. I'm on edge right now, Deborah. He's a god fearing man, right? Yeah. It is a pretty funny move though that he pulled. He's losing his lid over yeah, this yeah, shit. Yeah. It is a pretty hilarious, like the most irrational thing because. This and by the way, this is what the kind of stuff when you elect people to be. I, I believe he's a state legislator. He's not a, a congressperson. Be like this guy's thing is to like pass laws for the state, and some of the shit he's putting forward. Like these are like this is a, you know, probably a twenty-page bill or something. Spent twenty tons of time writing this. He goes, "We're gonna call 
animal control on the furries. I think he was kind of kidding with I that a bit. I don't know. He's not. It's literally written into this. I know. They asked him about that, like if he's being serious, and then he kind of said, well, I'm serious as the okay, day here, is night. Here's, here's, but it okay, seems so, like he's kind of kidding. Okay, so state of Oklahoma, second session of the, I have it in front of me, second session of the 59th legislature, 2024, House Bill 3084 as introduced, an act relating to schools prohibiting certain students from participating in school curriculum or activities requiring the student's parents or guardian to pick the student up from school, provided for removal of the student by animal, providing for removal of the student by animal control No, I know services. he said that. I know I know he's saying that providing for codification and providing for an effective. Do you think they're no, actually going to have like the animal control come? <laughs> well, if the animal control came and they're just like, you need to get rid of all these furries, they'd be like, yeah, that's a guy in a suit. I'm not getting rid. That's not what I do. Yeah, well, they go, yeah, <laughs> we passed the law. Then this is what you do now. Well, yeah, <laughs> it literally says right here: be it enacted by the people of the state of Oklahoma, section one, new law. <laughs> okay, but you have to find. So you find and hire an exterminator. He comes. They made the a law. Go, we have a fucking. Goes, yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, yeah I, I think exterminator law. comes. And and you're just like, all right, where's the animals? And you're like, right there. And it's a bunch of guys and fucking with, you know, pink bunny ears. And you're just like, is this like some sort of joke? And you're like, no, I want you to put them in the truck. And you're like, come on, man. Like, well, if their parents don't pick them up, that's the only way he goes, can dispose he goes, of them. He goes, is my money not green? <laughs> <laughs> It says right here, the parent or guardian. This is like a law that they're trying to pass in Oklahoma. Now imagine they're again, they're like I he told probably you this guy does this. Enough. He goes, he goes, they're never gonna actually pass it, but they're just to make a point or make some news. The parent or guardian of a student in violation of this section shall pick the student up from the school or animal control services shall be contacted to remove the student. <laughs> I know there are so many furries in Oklahoma. Seems like the furries There's probably not. I, I don't know. I saw a couple of videos and they were I think they maybe just have their meetup once a year and there's a lot of them. Yeah. But in the video there's a lot lot of them i'll tell you that much so i don't know for this one video whatever was going on in oklahoma yeah. man they were plentiful this is this is i think kind of um riding on the coattails of the whole like did you hear that there's a kid at my school <laughs> who uses a goddamn litter box well that was the go, exact thing that's a, it was the same thing yeah, yeah yeah and they're like and that was the one thing where you go like i don't i've seen so many rumors i've never seen it actually confirm the litter box thing no yeah, you go like, is that actually happening? No, apparently it's kind of like a euphemism or whatever you call that. Yeah, but the, uh, there was an old joke that uh, people used to say that, like, at least in Ajax, they go like, two things you don't want, your, or at least in my circles, they go, two things you don't want your son to be is a goalie or a drummer. Yeah. And there was a joke like, <laughs> course, this yeah. guy did not, th this guy's that one of those type of guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. A goalie or a drummer, probably not even a drummer, doesn't even know what that is, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> some he's some army slang. The, right. the, the worst thing your son could be you would be like he's only like a he's a administration in the army and then you and then he doesn't even know this type of world where there was an option that your son's dressing up like a uh yeah I don't I I can't imagine this thing's getting passed but this guy's had it with the furries. Yeah, this he's this is the two had it with the furries. The, there's like a line being drawn. One. You're either with the furries or against the furries. <laughs> you don't want to be against the furries. They organized. Remember, we're the know. furries. Remember the furries? We covered them recently. They were, we were organized hackers. against the Christians. They were the hackers. Remember furry the, hackers. We covered that recently. Remember the furry hackers, and they were like hacking into like nuclear fucking. Uh, oh yeah, nuclear energy things. This guy's fucked. This guy might be this messing guy does with the wrong. Not thing. know what he's doing right now. All his he just thinks this is some fucking lib shit. But they're like on some next level. Yeah, yeah. These. these this guy's uh you fuck with the furries at your own at your own uh, it is possible though because this guy just thinks like this is oh next the first thing you know they're non-binary then they're a furry whereas they're like nah buddy we're a whole separate category and you just fucking dug your own grave pal <laughs> Okay, yeah, prepare for all every like you better build email yourself a ever, fucking. They're gonna bury him in his own litter box literally every email he's ever sent is gonna about to get released <laughs> on twitter Every dick pic he's ever sent this just guy messed with the wrong anything. fucking man <laughs> Yeah, I mean the guy wears a cowboy hat and and a bolo. Tie. That is the one of those things when this becomes like a political thing and you have to be like a lib and you have to be fucking like on the side of the furries. It really does make one of those things where you're like, you know how that they did. You know how they always do that poll where they're just like uh, the the parties by uh, age and race. Yeah, and uh, sorry, um, gender, and they did basically. I think it was uh, Democrats, Republicans, married men, 39% Democrat, 59% Republican, married women, 42% Democrat, 56% Republican, unmarried men, 45% Democrat, 52% Republican, un 
unmarried women, 70% d- d- dem. Yeah. That and it, was, it really is like, it, I think you kind of does make sense though, because once you're in a relationship, you are a little bit like, shut it down. Yeah. You sh- <laughs> one, shut it down. And you then two, also you're like, okay, well we kind of like potentially have the, the m- uh, money in the pot. Just got Once you're bigger. married, you don't think if they're just like, hey, uh, all these girls are sucking every dude's dicks. You're like, this has got to stop. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Married men, you want it, you got to fucking put a stop to that fun. You know what I mean? But also like with taxes and all this shit. Of you go, course hey, look, with taxes. Goes, if you voted for this guy, we'd have that uh, like fucking new sea you wanted. Or you can vote for your guy. And then, then they get to wear the furry they, costumes. And then they wear the furry <laughs> costumes. Our kids probably get their dicks chopped off and no sea So... I guess decide what you want. You want the dicks chopped off or you want that Z-Dude? Yeah, but some person you don't even know can get an abortion. Oh, in here's state, your option. In a state you don't live in. So. You, you, get, you, <laughs> you can fight for abortions in a state you don't live in. Or option two, they're going to ban smoking at the bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> your local yeah. bowling legion <laughs> exactly you know, and we get the outdoor fireplace you go think about the fucking chop off clinics I've been saying the final stage of gentrification is uh, gender reassignment surgery <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's when you know you lost the neighborhood yeah. <laughs> if you're in the Bronx and all of a sudden you just see like you look around and you see a gender reassignment on every, every corner you <laughs> Bronx you just, will never allow that the Bronx is too you see a bunch of you see a bunch of white dudes walk, hobbling out of the clinic <laughs> <laughs> you go. This is the f- we go. We they're lost all, the neighborhood. All wheelchairs are like <laughs> the bakery's where it starts, and then you get the non-binary <laughs> baristas, and then the baristas need somewhere to go to get their fucking surgeries. That's yeah. how it starts, man. That's the final surgery. But I think that that's kind of this stuff is where you see the. People probably get a little bit get off board. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this does a disservice you- to the overall movement because this guy now gets lumped in with like, you know trans people playing sports and all that stuff and then they're like yeah but the, the guy with like wants do you think to call the animal control on the furries do you think the furries see themselves in the like less weird than like non-binary kind of uh, polyamorous chicks do you think they're more do you no. think because did the furries they're see all them- autistic but some of the furries see themselves as like this is just a thing I do. Yeah, but they're all have they all have autism. This is like a high autism. I think they all even well, like the non-binary that's and stuff. Controversial, probably. No, no, I guess that's probably not controversial. I don't know. I think they. What do you think of them? They think of it. They as are like, a lot of them. Are how non-binary. are we weirder than someone that just goes to a you know like a comic con and wears the costume? Like, why am I fucking weird? Because there's a sex component. This can be. I think so. I don't know if there's. I think like the there girl, is when you're in doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I really don't know enough about the world of furries, but uh, I think they are. A lot of them are non-binary for sure. Johnny, Google if there's a fucking. They're component. all communists too. <laughs> like, have you ever go? You ever gone like poked around on like uh, furry Twitter? I actually haven't. But okay. You get you get fucking ten. I've been hundredth the, page of Pornhub wasn't doing it for you. No, you guys no, no, start no, no, going no, off no, reservation. No, not a sexual thing. This is more like a profiling thing. No, it isn't. At They're all, all you're doing research. Yeah, of course. They're all just like the guy from uh, <laughs> what's the know thine enemy, Ryan. Um, uh, the guy from not Pink was it Pink Floyd? No, the guy that was doing research. Pink Panther. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh, just, just a couple guys, Danny and the guy from the Who. A couple guys just, doing research, just doing a little research. Oh, yeah, yeah, Pete Townsend. <laughs> um, no, but they're all communists. Okay, they're all like if you go, you'll see them. They all because you see they all have the same avatars. They have these like cartoony like horses and stuff. Avatars, a lot of the furries and stuff. Okay, and uh, you do sort of know a lot about them. I uh, know I do, but and they're all like legitimately uh, like the farthest right they are on the political spectrum is being a communist. Like that's how far like right they'll go is being a communist. And they'll go even further left than that than being a communist. Like they're fucking real far left. And uh yeah, they're like all just communists. Real clash of the Titans with the furries and this guy though. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably this guy's a Republican. He's like, I'm literally battling fucking communist furries. <laughs> He's like, if I don't do this, America's going to fall. <laughs> do you think they wear the furry costume to come represent themselves in court? Uh, maybe. Well, the thing is, is like, you know, the animal catchers, like if you remember, like, you know, like the Snoop Dogg video or whatever, they, they grab you. They have that little rope and then they grab I, you by the head and you just <laughs> take your helmet off. You go, fine. And then you walk off. <laughs> yeah, you walk off. You go, Fine. They take your helmet off and you just yeah, walk off. Yeah, because it's not connected literally to your body. So then they get you by the neck and you just go. There okay. <laughs> go to class. Annoying. Your geography. <laughs> <laughs> then you sign up for animal control. You go. I don't know. It's better than fucking rabid raccoons or something. I guess so. Yeah. The um, the in you the. This girl from Ukraine won the Japanese uh, Miss Japan competition. Yep. 
Good for her. Good for her. But it's interesting, which is what, because that used to be a 100% diverse competition, right? Mm-hmm. But it's interesting because a lot of people are obviously uh, saying, you know, how, why are we letting a white chick? She's not even Japanese. And the girl's like, I'm speak Japanese. Yeah, she speaks born fluent. Here. She's like, well, she wasn't born there. She was born in Ukraine, but she came when she was five. But she's like, speaks, everybody's like, she speaks fluent Japanese. She's, and I, I mean, it is a real debate to it's have. It's a conundrum for these but, people. Well, because you have to, once you have that debate there, then you go, okay, well, how does this apply to everyone? else in the world like can miss america be like you, you know no you're going to backwards it's it's more their the, their debate settled here it's like you can't be uh well i guess the debate settled here now that's making its way over there and well then, i think it's making its way down the races yeah like it started with white people and then now fucking asians are kind of in the chopping block being like you got to do all the stuff too pal right yeah, yeah exactly. you know what i mean yeah, and then yeah. i think it hits like indians next Right, yeah, and I mean, look, uh, you know, if if you, I think black places, they'll they'll go like no white chicks. I think they would stick with their thing for a while. Yeah, I wonder if they're not going to get hit with Miss Africa. I wonder if Miss Africa, if there's a white like Miss Africa. I think they're granted it's a uproar about that man. I granted it's a continent. Asians are getting sprayed with the fucking Western shit. Let's see, Miss Africa, Asia. Well, Japan's so weird because they are this like really specific, like monoculture thing they don't they're not big on they obviously people do uh immigrate there though and they assume you know the ideal is you want to be like hey well if you're immigrating here you have to adopt all of our customs and this girl's like i ate i did i did i just look white i'm like but i did all the stuff i'm like i consider myself japanese so then the question is what makes a what a, makes a japanese person what makes a white person what makes a whatever you know like it and there's it, it, the question is is it your nationality or your ethnicity yeah and, and you, they're, they're my point both. is you can't just have it. well the point is obviously you can't have it both ways you can like if you think that then you also have to think that about other countries right you can't be like for japan it's you have to be japanese obviously in america like anywhere else it doesn't that right mm-hmm. so you have to have some sort of a consistent belief about countries yeah and I, I'm sure, yeah, I, I wonder what the actual consensus is in Japan if people are like, you know, if, because again, they, the, well, the, art, the article was like a bunch of, I love, the article is like a bunch of people who were like mad about it and were like, I'll to- read you some of their comments. The person who was chosen for Miss Japan is not even a mix with Japanese, but 100% pure Ukrainian. <laughs> uh, they couldn't call it. <laughs> pure is an interesting word. Yeah. I understand that she is beautiful, but this is Miss Japan. Where is the Japanese? So pe- this is the kind of thing. So this person is just saying, like, we need to preserve Japanese. Another person says, if she was half Japanese. So a lot of people are saying, like, listen, give me, I, need fi- I need a bit of Japanese blood. Yeah, yeah they want half. They want half. the blood. They want half 50-50. Japanese, she wasn't even born in Japan. Others uh, say her win sending the wrong message. I think Japanese people should get, would get the wrong message when a European-looking person is called the most beautiful Japanese. So this that's probably their best argument is going... They're trying to go on the other side of the... Of the, of the, of the, of the like... Uh, social justice being like what we're trying to say that white people are hotter than us right that i think that's their best argument is try to stay on the other side of it yeah i guess you know what yeah, i mean yeah. they go like hey what's wrong with you they're they're yeah saying like oh there's something wrong with from an argumentation standpoint they're probably better off being like oh this is white people trying to steal our like they try to make our make they have to stay in the victim sort of area right because if they sort of be like yeah that's we the, take japanese seriously yeah, you can't be on the offensive on this you have, you to, have be to be sort of on the off- offensive like we think that uh you know we you're the oppressor here mm-hmm. trying to oppress our small little our meager <laughs> japanese <laughs> yeah, our our meager. beauty competition oh so sorry uh yeah I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it opens up these cans of worms. I'm just looking actually right here. It is here. a can of worms. Miss Zimbabwe. What do we got? White chick for the first time this year. This white chick. I, I, she actually looks like she could be trans, but I don't think they would allow uh, a twofer like that. But uh, it was, yeah, and people are mad. People are not happy that Miss Zimbabwe was a white chick this year. Uh, they're like African nation and they go why the fuck is then you go I don't know well white people live there white people live there do you want segregation where literally like there's a Miss White Zimbabwe and a Miss Black Zimbabwe and you go okay. they're like obviously yes yes but, but <laughs> again you're like okay yes well, here no there <laughs> what and next you're gonna tell me you want an all black basketball league alright come on <laughs> guys relax 
If she were born Russian, she wouldn't have won. Not a chance. Obviously, the criteria is now a political. De- so that's another an interesting. That's good article. Another, yeah. so there's some people are they're trying all angles here. That's that's, that's, that's okay throwing one. the. Yeah, I don't know. That's <laughs> you're throwing the fucking see what sticks at the wall here. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, you go. Yeah, maybe if she lives, she's five. She they're moved, saying the judges are pro Ukraine. She moved to Japan when she was five. You're like, I don't know. Maybe it's. I'm definitely. I'm telling you, people. Are, they they just know they don't like it. Well, they and they're know, trying to come up with why again, after, and they know. <laughs> what this portends for the future because all it takes is the one white one and you go okay well it's it's like the law i know a precedent has now been set where miss japan does not need to be japanese uh ethnicity ethnicity and they're gonna be like all right well enjoy because it's gonna be everything now like in the next 50 years there'll be a black one there'll be a filipino one there'll be a korean one there'll be just everything and they're just like they're like, yeah it's wide open it's been opened up Sorry. It has been opened up. We got to tell the fellas here about Salty Sailor Coffee. This says, wake up, man up, the boys cast. Yes, sir. This is custom- Pretty cool. <laughs> They're not messing around American with that. American flag right on there. the top, too. Not messing around. Unique name, unique flavor. Dive, dive into the world of Salty Sailor Coffee. Not just another coffee brand. It's an experience. Single origin, organic selections ensure top-notch quality. The meticulous sourcing process, only the finest beans, and you know that we're bean men over here. Oh, big bean guys. Only bean, and only the finest beans make the cup here. They're not, make the cut and the cup. Mm-hmm. Whole bunch of signature blends. For example, Whiskey Barrel. They mm-hmm. got cool names. Yep. And they taste great. So I've been on this stuff for the last, like, uh, I guess five months now. Someone will tell you. I've been, I've been I'm actually. It too. It's good yeah, coffee. Love, it's good coffee. They're not Very messing around. Coffee. And the bullets. Show them the bullets. Oh, yeah. We have the bullets here. These things, they're these little, like, ice cube bullet ice deals. Cube bullets. They look like they're bullets, but then you actually just put them in the freezer, and then you put them in your whiskey, and that way your whiskey doesn't get watered down. Yeah, and they've got cool gear, mugs, badass. shirts, hats. The mission is drink coffee and do good. They're proudly given back because 10% of every sale goes to the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society to support active duty sailors and Marines that need a helping hand. And despite being a boutique brand with a nearly 10% charity commitment, they stand toe-to-toe in pricing with leading veteran-owned premium coffee vendors like Black Rifle or Blackout Coffee so you can experience premium quality without the premium price tag. Visit the website and discover a treasure trove of flavors, saltysailorcoffee.com. S-A-L-T-S-A-I-L-O-R-C-O-F-F-E-E.com. Special promo code for the listeners is BOYSCAST15. So use that BOYSCAST15 promo code, saltysailorcoffee.com. Biggest discount offer you can get. Valentine's Day is just around the mother effing corner, and that's why we got to tell you about Song Finch, which could be the perfect answer to you sitting there thinking, what do I do? What do I get her? What do I get her? What's that unique thing? So I'm not just some loser buying chocolates and flowers. Yeah, just exactly. Every other chump. Every other chump out there. If you're ready to tell the special someone what they mean to you, you can't quite find the words. You can't find the way to do it. Forget generic gifts that create clutter. Let me recommend a gift that is truly unique for your relationship, a professionally recorded song crafted just for them. We're not joking here. And, you know, telling people your feelings might be easy for some, but nerve-wracking for other. Might people not want, might want, not want to do it all together, mm-hmm. huh? Yep. But the perfect gift can say it for you, especially when that gift is a truly one-of-a-kind, uniquely crafted just for them. Songfinch is the ultimate gift to show how much you care. An original studio-quality song inspired by your story that's completely unique, personal, lasts forever. Walks you through, you just go to the site, it walks you through four-step process to create an original song. All you gotta do is tell them who the song is for, Provide some details, let them know the type of song you want, pick your favorite artist, you can go through them, or you can just get matched with one, and they'll pour their heart into writing, recording, and producing your original song in just four to seven days. Cool gift, Songfinch is the original music platform that guarantees that you'll love your song, or they'll work with you till they tell you do. They stand behind their community of talented artists and every original song they create, which as of now, they've done over 300,000. So for a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song for free 
on Spotify so you can listen to your new favorite song anywhere you go and you can just show them that it's on Spotify. So go to songfinch.com slash boyscast and start your song. After your purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song for free. And that is a $50 value normally. This offer is available to the Boyscast listeners at our special URL, which is songfinch.com slash boyscast. That is songfinch.com slash boyscast. And do not wait. Get started now. But again, these things are so. Fucking you see, in uh, Zimbabwe, because we've been following the Pope stuff, yeah. <laughs> all of the all of the African bishops were like really coming out against the blessing the gay yeah, marriages. Yeah, they don't like the gay stuff in homo- in uh, Africa. What is this gay? Yeah, <laughs> is this, and then you get the poo poo. Remember that guy? <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, you get a little bit of the poo poo, and they get on it on the penis, and then the penis can get to the poo poo. <laughs> That's basically what they're saying. That's basically literally what the like the Pope saying like yeah. So Africa like they're they have an issue with like uh, the uh, the poo poo, <laughs> uh, the penis, and then um, so. Yeah. Well, it is true. The Pope sort of came out when he sort of did a statement because he's he's handling with extreme caution too. He's he's juggling two groups. He's trying to make <laughs> he doesn't want to get on the bad side of the African bishops, yeah. but he also doesn't want to get on the bad side of the gays. So he's sort of juggling a couple things. And he goes uh, interview with an Italian newspaper. He says. That certain bishops belong to small ideological groups. So certain people that are against the gay stuff, it's just small ideological groups, except Africans, whom he said were a separate case. <laughs> because for them, homosexual is something bad from a cultural viewpoint, and they don't tolerate it. So he's kind of <laughs> saying, like, he's sort of trying to put it out there that, like, the white people that are against this homo shit, uh, the, the, the gay blessings... Uh, are ideologically messed up uh-huh. where the black guys is actually a separate thing and they have like their own way of life <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah the pope's like you ever heard of a uh, phrase no homo where do you think that came from called the pope's trying to be like a cultural relativist you know what i mean yes yeah he's just saying hey look the, the africans just don't fuck with that gay shit but he's saying that there's not the, the way that they think about it is actually very reasonable <laughs> there's nothing ideological <laughs> about it well he's like the way they think about it is how we thought about it 30 years ago <laughs> one year ago. or one year ago ago in the catholic church you're like we thought about that pretty recently and i guess they don't have the internal pressures on them that we do he's struggling with he's that like, one kind of caved on that one and then <laughs> i'm not gonna lie kind of uh, envious of the fact that they just kind of held their guard on do you think he, the pope's play the pope's sort of playing on both sides like the gay congregation comes in to talk about their gay blessings and he's like what's up girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> who's getting blessed today you getting blessed you can throw in the water and then he goes to the africa and he's like my brother my brother my brother you know i ain't about that gay shit man a man and a woman that's what i'm talking about you know i love that pussy I think yeah. he goes. I think he plays. I wonder what happens like if there's ever uh, to come. Uh, you know what I'm talking come. about. <laughs> Who loves pussy? We love pussy. Who pussy. loves pussy? <laughs> I wonder if they ever boys. Have what's a, better? <laughs> okay, uh, I was saying, I wonder what happens if they ever have a black pope, right? Like, because in the next book, because I imagine he's got to be pretty. Well, he's old. be playing the same game. No, what if the new black pope comes in? He goes, hey. Gay shit's done, okay? None of this? <laughs> he goes, hey, like... I'm not blessing first none of this thing body the, boy First business. thing on the Black Pope, and he's like got all the fucking jewelry on this one. He goes, he goes. the Black Pope's probably like, do you know how much jewelry's back there? They just never wear it. <laughs> like, you have so much shit back there. Comes out, looks like fucking... I smell a stand-up bit for Danny <laughs> on his new Def Jam set. You know how the Black Pope be <laughs> coming out looking like Rick Ross. <laughs> <laughs> you know... <laughs> He got the grills. <laughs> he the black pope. He talked to God. <laughs> you know he, he got that a- long ass suit. You know he be asking God about some shit like God. I need my car repaired. <laughs> <laughs> You know, God, he be asking God about some black shit. Yeah, he's got he got that do rag underneath that white pope hat. I think you can bring that to Dev Jam. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason there All can't right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Cedric the Entertainer. Now we have, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dirty D. Bullshuck. I'm at the Apollo, and everybody's like, like, literally everybody's like, <laughs> All right. I'm like, imagine there's a black pope, and everybody's like, <laughs> This motherfucker, he not be sitting down, he be lounging. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the thing where they have the white like when they're uh the smoke comes out you know or whatever like to pick the pope and you, the they- black pope be sitting in that confession booth someone come in and be like i i what I, I just got head from a girl in the alleyway you know black pope be like well give me directions to this alleyway <laughs> <laughs> why don't you be giving me directions 
<laughs> if I have you, uh, if you could just give the black pope coordinates <laughs> to this alleyway, dude, the pope mobile is gonna be. You know the pope mobile? Yeah. That thing's gonna be on rims before you know it. I really put it. Eighteen look, spinners. Uh, Obama put a uh, fucking end to an entire genre of comedy yeah. <laughs> of what the president would be like. Yeah, right, right, I know. Yeah, imagine this is a black president. Yeah, all right, <laughs> dude. Wasn't it? Def Jam was like every single Def Jam set. At least one guy would did a uh, yeah, scenario yeah. of what it would be like if the president was black. And they were doing it forever too. Like even. Uh, uh, Eddie Murphy had that on Delirious, yeah. the black president. I think that's you got your new bit, the black pope. Though. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there could be a black pope. There's not a rule against it. There just has never <laughs> been. One. Obviously, there's no rule against it. I mean, there's it. like a uh, unreal. well. I guess it's mostly Italian dudes, though, right? So. No, the this pope. What are we on, Pope Francis? He's What's from Francis? Argentina. Oh, that's true. No, no, no. There's that's the thing. It, they don't have to be Italian. They don't switch over that often, though. Well, they so have to die. Like, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like you're talking about our lifetime. There's only been what two. No, there's been Pope uh, Ratzinger who stepped down because uh, he wanted to like... It's the Jewish Pope? No, there's not been a Jewish... He's the Nazi Pope. No, he's the Nazi Pope. He's the German one, Ratzinger. There's been Pope John Paul, I think, before that. So it's it's not... We think we've had three in our life. But um, yeah, anyways, maybe we'll see a black Pope. <laughs> You'd love and that. And then you know how that <laughs> would be. What would that look like? he looked like uh, Vince Carter on draft day with that long-ass <laughs> suit. <laughs> so you think that he <laughs> <laughs> I think there's some pretty high up bishops though, right? Is that I think that's how it works. Is bishop becomes the pope? I think that's what it is. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, speaking the, on the topic of uh, the, Pride Toronto, yeah. basically they did like an audit and they had to pay back like half a mil to the government and they basically were taking all this grant money and then they took it and they couldn't explain where half a mil went. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, what's a half a mil among... Well, basically the auditor friends. came in and it's just a bunch of guys in like an orgy. There's like money getting thrown everywhere, just doing fucking whippets and they go... <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just checked. There is uh, one of the candidates for the next pope is a black guy, Peter Turkson. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so he's 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 expected to be one of the options. P Turk, P Turk, <laughs> P Turk, money. Okay, I'm done. Pope Diddy. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. They, w what did they say they spent the money on? That's the thing. They didn't poppers. They are, look, we yeah. spent the money on poppers. <laughs> They're all gone. No, they that's how poppers works. They couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> we use them, okay? Like, oh, no, basically it came in and there was like a bunch of guys in leather like burning dollar bills and the guy goes, I'm here for the audit and they go, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> they go, did you guys try to look around and they're just like, don't don't go in there. They open it up, just a bunch of fucking helium no, balloons. The, <laughs> the auditor comes in to like do the audit and then like just two hours later walks out no blood in his face. <laughs> like he's just like, he's just <laughs> the shit that just had to get explained to they him go, where so all the money went. He's just like, I need a shower. <laughs> They're like, oh, we got a shower just down the hall. He goes, I'm going home. <laughs> no, what no. did you spend the 500K on? <laughs> you got a minute? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, so, but it's just funny because it was like backdated too. So it was like over the last, like, I, I guess someone at some point was kind of like, what is going on? You know what I was kind of thinking is it would be hilarious if you know how people always say like I should get a bill for what I what my tax money went to. Yeah, that would be hilarious if they had to give like, uh, you know, uh, small town guys like a bill for what the government went to. And it was like the big cock on the fucking pride float. <laughs> like you paid for 20 yeah, percent of that. Yeah, yeah. Four cents. Big you, cock. You paid, four, you paid for you paid for. <laughs> you paid for four cents of the fucking uh, yeah, yeah. the guar style jizz <laughs> to come out of the fucking TD Pride float. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you hope if their government's giving money, and I mean, probably people are—they're well, getting two mil a year for their float, rolling their, their eyes at me right now. But you think if the government gives you money like grants, there's some sort of process of just a check and balance to make sure that the money's not being mis misappropriated. Maybe it's impossible. Yeah, I think you're out. finding out you would be wrong about that, Danny. What would a gay pope be like? <laughs> <laughs> blessings, blessings, <laughs> blessings, everybody. Indian Pope. <laughs> I'm not Pope. Everybody come. To He'd be wearing a lot of gold, too. They love gold in India. <laughs> He'd be wearing some gold, too. Black Pope's too funny, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. Uh, I mean, remember they did that big thing for the Arrive Can app where they fucking blew 50 million on that, but. 
<laughs> well, they, blew. they at least got to the bottom of it a bit. I don't think anybody got in trouble though. Uh, two mil went to the the pride for the pride float, but yeah, they go. We're encountering challenges in locating certain documents for certain expenditures <laughs> spanning the years 2017 to 2021. Yeah, yeah. I don't think uh, Coke dealers and ketamine dealers give invoices, so that'll be tough to track those down. <laughs> yeah, that, that ketamine budget probably. <laughs> I just like they go in, they, they go to the accountant's room. He's just fucking. They walk in. He's just like hanging from a belt in the corner. Like, oh, sorry. Uh, were you guys here for the four o'clock? I thought it was four fifteen. <laughs> sorry, I had it written down as four fifteen. Well, that could have been bad. <laughs> could have been really bad. How do they repay the money though? I don't like, where think, does that come I from? I don't think they do. I think they just kick the can down the road. Oh, they just go, hey, we just want you to know that we know. No, they kind of say we're working on it. Like, they're coming any day uh, now. <laughs> we just have one more guy. We have one more guy's rectal cavity yeah. to check for the <laughs> missing documents. This couple guys are out of the country at the moment in Thailand. <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't pay for the flights, but anyways, once they get back from uh, Bangkok... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially, <laughs> fucking the documents are not getting found is probably what's happening. But yeah, and because they're gay, probably they'll be like, "Fuck, I don't know. We kind of we can't really make a stink about this." I think Trudeau pardons them. Yeah, <clears throat> this Canadian prime minister doesn't do that, do they? Hmm? There's no like mass pardons on their way. Out. I think everyone just says, "Pardon, beg your pardon, beg your pardon, pardon, eh? pardon, eh? yeah, pardon, 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 sorry, eh? pardon, pardon, sorry. <laughs> beg your pardon." <laughs> um. The uh, one of my favorite things has been happening recently on the internet is there was a whole bunch of girls. Co- you know how guys will post, um, uh, guys will say that, uh, you know, the algorithm's all something, and people will say, oh, that's just because you looked at it, uh-huh. but it's, sometimes it's not. Sometimes yeah. it's they fed it to you, right? Right, but and they looked at your profile. But one thing that's happening in like Hinge and Tinder is there's all these girls that were saying, like, hey, there's no hot guys on Tinder, and Hinge is just all uggos, like they were making all these things. And like mm-hmm. a couple girls had like a whole big like hoopla about how this app has no, <laughs> and basically the, the Hinge. And some other ones release statements, mainly Hinge, saying that uh, we basically try to match you up with based on people that like your profile. Yeah, they get, <laughs> there's yeah, they for sure on dating apps. I don't know if it's like if it was always like that, but they've evolved over time. But they 100 percent just give you a score. Yeah, that's so hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> because go. there's all these girls that made their whole profile like how look at all these uggos on Hinge, and then yeah. basically they come out and they're just like, yeah, that's we matched you with what you're worth. Right. Yeah, yeah. They go, hey. We we have a pretty good idea. That's, the, I mean, that's the thing. They probably have a pretty objective, like, number of, like, when someone says, oh, she's a six out of ten, like, Hinge probably has it down to two decimal places where you are. Well, they know who and you get, And it's pretty yeah. spot on. You go, yeah, we've, like... They know what the supply, they don't, they know what the supply and demand is based on who swipes well, you. Well, they, we, look, we showed your photo to a hundred thousand guys. We have their scores. Uh-huh. And so we just know. Yeah, and they're sort of like their scores are wrong. I'm a fucking dime yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah, of course. And all the guys probably think that too. I'm sure all the guys are like, "Where are the fucking hot chicks at?" <laughs> it's not guys saying it though. That's what I'm saying. Guys are take what they get. Guys do take what they get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the guys are not going to be compl- like guys in their mind complain. I mean, you do hear that it is crazy that some guys are straight up like sometimes they'll call into my shows or whatever and they'll be like, "Yeah, they're like I literally get zero matches. It doesn't matter who I swipe on. Like I get zero. Really? Yeah, like some guys like i guess if you get down to that like you know well maybe it's the opposite maybe they have them in the uh, no i think they're like we're talking like they're they're they're, uh zero they're just like yeah i i literally get zero matches and when they do get matches uh like this one guy specifically i'm thinking of who always calls in the bathhouse and he's like they're escorts every time like anybody who i do match with is a hundred percent of the time either a fake or a prostitute this guy needs some better photos <laughs> that's what i said remember when you knew the guy that was doing a photo shoot yeah he was borrowing a dog and fucking, <laughs> he, borrow a dog. Dude, he borrowed friends i know i know you had to borrow all these people but like it's not but the it turns, craziest I, I idea I, if you're well, fucking having no success. i got I, I don't know if i ever told you this i got the backstory to that from the photographer the guy was a former orthodox jew and he, he wanted to erase that from he, no he left 
being an Orthodox Jew. He wanted to be normal. That is the most. All his friends are Orthodox Jews. So he's like, he can't have a normal photo of him and just all the boys dressed all the same. One of them fucking swinging a chicken. And like, <laughs> they go, that's not going to get you any ass. So he had to literally manufacture this whole world because he's like, I That don't. is a very Jewish way to do dating, though, by the way. <laughs> Of course. Well, I mean, it's just he hasn't. He doesn't have any. I guess you just yeah. You do normal. Just be like by myself. I don't know. It is smart though. No bullshit. Yeah. No. Bu- <laughs> so th- the reason I brought it up is we talked a little about um, that girl. What's her name? That was the uh, that killed her parents because they had pro. Oh, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Destiny Desiree. Rin- what's Munchausen. Her, what's her name? I was gonna watch that I documentary proxy. and then I didn't have wherever it was on woman it didn't seem like none it seemed of like you guys are all there. struggling i can't eh? desiree odyssey it's not something like desiree. that <laughs> what's her name gypsy rose gypsy rose desiree there. i don't know I don't struggling know. stick to black pope pal <laughs> <laughs> you know how we be poping <laughs> so and then so i found out that one of the ways that people meet the girls in prison because we're like how do you meet the girls in prison and how they do it is they have a female inmate pen pal website called yeah, women we talked behind about bars we talked about this because i i see them on tiktok did we not talk about this we didn't talk about women uh, behind bars oh, okay well i see the on uh, the tiktok they have like it's like women behind bars dot com i know and i was do, were you looking were you snooping around they have tiktoks yeah i just snooped so, around so on tiktok i maybe i told this to someone else on tiktok they have there's for these prison like TikTok things where it's like online dating and the girls they get to make like a two minute video where they go hey I'm so and so guys do it too and they go hey I'm like this is where I'm at I'm in until and I just want to like meet people and so it's like a video like old school like lowered expectations I don't know if it has it for guys though I think it's they really, have it for guys too this website they don't have menbehindbars.com do they for sure they do yeah yeah for sure they do they have the pen pals are you sites. tricking me I'm not tricking you. Ryan's watching gay porn right now. No men behind bars.com. There's jail pen pal apps for sure. Okay, maybe. I'm sure the guys don't get as much uh, play as the girls, but these girls are probably getting fucking Yeah, writeaprisoner.com, uh, Wire of Hope. There's tons of them. Well, the moral of the story is more guys are probably going on these sites to message the girls than vice versa. Yeah, it's... Yeah, uh, I mean, some of these guys are fishing with dynamite with that. That's like I've been trying to do a joke about that, but like one of the things that's so funny to me is like guys will be like, "Yeah, I can't meet anybody on Hinge." You're like this guy murdered his parents, and he cannot fucking shake off Sniz with a stick. <laughs> like literally, some guy literally killed a ga- like a gas station employee yeah. and everybody inside, and like gets some letters every day. Well, it's once you saw Stephen Hawking was fucking beating it <laughs> off. <laughs> you don't have a and big like, excuse. And then guys are like on the regular guys, but yeah. Finding a female prison pen pal to connect with can be tricky. Luckily, Women Behind Bars is here to help. So, I, 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 I took a few of the people's profiles, and some of them, in, it's cool. some of them include their charge, and some ladies, of them don't. I just like to know that I am not making fun of you right now. Uh, this is just this is Ryan's thing. So, We're saying so once you get out and someone shows you this, and you maybe have some sort of <laughs> vendetta or a uh, score to settle, or just you know, just to tie up loose ends, just know that I'm on your side. Okay, see if this would do it for you if you were, <laughs> if Danny was in his player days. <laughs> Hello, I'm Amber. Currently doing ten years for an arson charge, <laughs> right up front. <laughs> Usually they don't include it. This girl's up front and personal. Yeah. I've made some bad choices, but I'm building myself up and learning to be a better person. We all have a past. What matters is our future. <laughs> I like it. Yep. I'm looking for someone to pass my time with and hopefully have a good connection. I'm silly, but also serious. <laughs> she's so she does the arson and it's very serious when she's doing the arson, but she's sort of silly when she's. Yeah. I think the word they use for it is bipolar. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. Capital L O L. I'm silly and also serious. I think the word they use for it is bipolar. But if you're interested, write me and see where this leads. Yeah. This girl is getting fucking letters galore, man. You want to? Here's a good one I found. Uh, hi there, new friend. Hi there, new friend. It's nice to meet you. I prefer the name Aaron. I'm looking to make genuine connections and lifelong friendships. I'm laid back nerd gamer that loves anime slash manga. My passions and hobbies include drawing, painting, exercise, yoga, meditation, singing, music, dancing, crocheting, makeup artist. I love anime anime and manga i hope to publish my own graphic novel one day i'm currently enrolled in college and plan to graduate next year i have a high school diploma uh i'm heavily fair family oriented i love to laugh and make others laugh too i'm looking forward to hearing from you take care scroll up because they say um my earliest release date june 2062 <laughs> 
I just love that. Like, I love to laugh. You're like, what did you do for an earliest release date of 2062? <laughs> that girl wasn't including it in there, right? <laughs> Murdered my family. Like she goes, oh, I love to laugh. And this is her photo. <laughs> she looks like the Joker. <laughs> Legitimately, I don't know if you want this photo. I don't know if we want to give him that kind of smoke or whatever. Well, she's got. She's not coming out till twenty six. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Screenshot I, that. Send it over to Johnny. <laughs> I guess we're good. Yeah, I guess we're good. But uh, yeah, literally twenty sixty two. Not a bad looking chick. Looks like. Uh, solid in the sack based on the overall craziness. I think you can pay real... off guards to get uh, to smash. I think that's how a lot of times if people want to smash, they pay off the guards. To sneak you into the prison? Uh-huh. You find a guard and then you pay them like fucking yeah, 10 they, grand or whatever. And then they'll... They let you come in for a smash. How with fucking her. desperate must you be to go... That must be a thrill for some guys, though. You could see how that could be a buzz. That though. could be a... Yeah, that could be a thrill. <laughs> But dude, 20, it could be. 60. I think it's mostly desperate people, but maybe there's a few thrill seekers in there. <laughs> Twenty six. You don't know what she's gonna do for her. That's Hello, a- y'all. <laughs> I'm serving a 16 year sentence for fraud. That's okay. I like when they're up front with it. Well, they kind of have to do. 16 year fraud sentence. That's a lot of fraud too. That's probably wasn't the first fraud. That's multiple. Fraud. Energetic, fun loving, extremely lonely and bored. Age and race doesn't matter. So she's down for whatever. I'd love to hear from you. Had some college until this hiccup. Hiccup? She's doing 16 years for fraud. <laughs> Plans to finish college when she gets out at 55. Law is my passion, <laughs> along with computers. Okay. <laughs> I think she's probably going to be barred from using computers when she's out. I don't know if they're allowed to bar you from using computers, but yeah, that's... Uh... Definitely probably barred from credit cards. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I wonder how that happens. Like, If you go to jail... For like a fraud kind of thing, can you declare bankruptcy while you're in jail? So then, when you get out, you're like your bankruptcy is over. That's a good po- question. I do I not know. know the answer to that. Hi, I'm Savannah. I'm looking for friends, maybe even a relationship one day. I enjoy spending time with my two babies, going to dinner, or just staying in bed and watching Netflix. They have Netflix in jail. I don't think she's saying she does any of this stuff in jail. I'm saying once she, hypothetically, I would enjoy spending time with my kids had I not been incarcerated for carjacking. You have to think at some point they are gonna just allow prisoners to as you know cr- prisoner reform and all that stuff because it's kind of like you know america is has such a high amount that they'll start being like okay you guys can have phones and they have computer i mean how quickly would a lot of these girls just be prostitutes then i guess you're like okay give me 10 grand and you can come smash if they live them well, but, yeah but that's yeah conjugal. apparently that's commissary of the fucking yin yang if you're <laughs> well i bet you that's why a lot of the, these chicks do it because you will get some guy who will be like you know fall in love with you and then post some throw some some money in the old commissary i'm telling you some of them sticky buns <laughs> I'm currently working on my GD, GED. I have three goals right now. One, to complete my GED. Two, is to start my candle business. <laughs> Rich guys only. <laughs> <laughs> this girl sounds like trouble, man. Send her over to JJ. This is a pretty much guarantee. Can we get JJ pen pal in with her? He's, he's like, guess what? I also have a candle business. <laughs> I forgot JJ has a candle business. <laughs> Candle business is a pretty much guarantee she's going to be a repeat offender, man, once this candle business doesn't work out. Like when she's in jail and they're like, what are you going to do when you get out for money? And she was like, oh, well, that's going to be taken care of because my candle business is going to take off. Yeah. Are you going to get back into crime? It's like, well, I won't need to because yeah. I'm going to be a candle conglomerate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally move over Yankee Candle. I'm going to be the CEO of candle business. Why would, are, yeah, why would I need to be carjacked? They all kind of say that they have a sense of humor. That is like the big one with all of them. I yeah, don't know if do that's like you just need a sense of humor humor to just deal with the fact that you're like in jail for this girl's years. really down though because she says i'm willing to relocate i have no family other than my grandma and my two children <laughs> so she, uh, that's no, a decent amount of family literally no family <laughs> yeah, yeah i have no family except for my two kids the kids are like what maybe the kids hate her or something two kids are the heir to the candle throne though <laughs> <laughs> yeah those kids will be coming around once the candle money starts <laughs> pouring in so this girl re- she goes i'm willing to relocate she's like i'm gonna get out i'm willing to take my two kids move to wherever you are all I need is some <laughs> quick startup capital. A real catch, huh? <laughs> she needs some startup capital for the candle business, though. Yeah. Damn, what did that chick do for 2062? God damn. Hey, you know what? I actually wanted to ask you this. Yeah. Did you hear this thing that the medieval roots of the myth of Jewish male menstruation? 
Yeah, I I was reading that. I've never heard. You've of that never heard of this in my life. So there's all that these articles seems to about be it, like a like in like a blood libel type deal, where they were like, because you know, like there's the whole thing where Jews got like kicked out of everywhere, and then like they would get kicked out of where because they would like you know, obviously I'm sure some of them people would be like, yeah, they didn't do anything or whatever, but like you know, I'm sure like a lot of the times they got kicked out of places because places were like, you have to be Christian or we're gonna kill you, and then they're like, okay, well we're gonna leave then or whatever, but then they would have like fake things. And some th- of them were hard kick out some of them some were, of them were yeah, so, exactly like some of them were like hey we just don't like the the business practices we're not saying you can't be we're, it's like uh it's sort of the closing time like listen i'm not saying you have to leave but you can't, <laughs> you can't be, be here, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no uh yeah, yeah yeah but anyways i've never heard of this it seems like maybe some you don't have to leave but you have to be christian if you stay kind of thing yeah and that's a very common thing and they did that there was like uh muslim countries that did that there was and the christian countries did that to the muslim people as well like there's all these things or whatever but uh apparently this, this is a big like, thing jewish male menstruation is the belief that jewish males experience menstrual periods or bleeding the belief was popular among christians across europe throughout the late medieval and early modern period including great britain germany and spain common ways Jewish men supposedly <laughs> menstruated was through nosebleeds, yeah, urination, uh-huh. bleeding of hemorrhoids. So if you, because I, <laughs> I guess Jewish guys are getting a lot of bleeding and uh, like nosebleeds and hemorrhoids, and brutal hemorrhoids. And they're saying it's menstruation, and a lot of time it was to expel impure blood. That's the reason menstruation. So apparently, this is like a pretty wild, like wide held belief at one time. The Jewish guys would have nosebleeds a lot because they were on their period. <laughs> No, I, mean, I used to have nosebleeds when I was a kid. Uh, maybe that's where that came from. It says it came from humorism. But humorism is uh, a word yeah. that describes like a, a philosophy. Of detailing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposed makeup and workings of the human body. It's nothing to do with comedy. being funny. Yeah, I don't. I, I this is the first I'm hearing of men. Um, oh, here in the thing it actually says blood libel. Is one of the things. What's the uh, blood libel part? Blood libel was the thing where, uh, in like medieval Christian countries, they said that Jewish people would like capture and kill Christian children because they needed like their blood for rituals. For rituals. Yeah, and that was like a common thing that people like believed, and then the, that, like that's why they were expelled from some places, Jews, because they're like you're killing our kids and using their blood. And then they're saying, and also you're having your period. How does the period relate? <laughs> I don't know. Or you're saying like, oh, you killed your kids. It's like, well, you don't uh, want to talk to him when he's yeah, on his period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he killed his kid because he's fucking on his rag. Is that, oh, a bunch of kids went missing. I guess fucking <laughs> shlomo is that time of month. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, there was a good uh, John Cusack who's like, he's like Mr. Progressive or whatever. Yeah. But he's been going hard on Israel. He said John Cusack fires back after being branded M- anti-Semite of the week over stands on Israel. <laughs> Oh, these That's fuck- crazy, by the way. That if, if they're <laughs> like, this is like a pretty active Twitter account, and you're like, he's your anti semite of the week. That's true. Yeah, I'm like, there's uh, people doing a lot more work than John Cusack. I think because he's famous. But- well, it's funny though, because like John Cusack, it's like this is the first time he's it's he's one of the things where he's never we've included him in our intro a few uh, weeks ago, but he's one of the people that's never you know he's always been congratulated for his political stances, of right? Well, he had all the right stances. But I just thought it was so funny because he's being like. Like, hey, all these places are a list of lies and blah, blah, blah. And it's just making me laugh so much that being like, they were, all of these places that call you racist and anti-Semitic were right every other single time. Exactly, I know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, I'm not saying that when people called racist, it gets thrown around. But this specific <laughs> time, right. yeah, yeah. they're off the money. Yeah, yeah. And he's saying, they're, he goes, they're weaponizing uh, like racism. And it was like... Only this time, yeah. Though. This is the first instance this of that. The first, that you, you're noticing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are this you the, noticing? This is the first instance that like uh, blogs have weaponized, you know, victimization. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And probably he was on board with the stop anti-Semitism until three months ago. He goes, yeah. Every time they found an anti-Semite, that was a real. Nailed real, it. Yeah. Gold star anti-Semite right there. <laughs> yeah, were, yeah. 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 Got it. Perfect. <laughs> but it's all it's just so funny when there's like their whole worldview has to fucking like crumble essentially. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it takes. I mean this is this one thing has done that for so many different people. But there's a lot of sort of things that are I feel like right now there's a lot of things happening at once that are sort of doing that mm-hmm. at the same time. What are the other things? This is the main one for me. 
that I've noticed. Uh, uh, I would say Asian DEI stuff. Yeah, but that's been going on. This was one where like mo- moved like the Latinos moved the liking thing. Trump would probably be another one. Yeah. Yeah, Latinos like yeah. That's uh. I think there's a lot of them that are sort of coming to heads right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It is fun to watch, though. I do enjoy. It is fun to watch people's worldviews crumble. Oh, the best because <laughs> they were the ones who were the most sure of, of everything. Exactly. That's why it was annoying because everybody was like so sure of everything. They would go like, "Yes, Trump is like the devil. He's like the going to bring up the end of the world, the end of democracy." And they were certain of all this stuff. They were certain of all this other bullshit. And then now they're like, "Yeah, not so sure of things, huh? Everything ain't so black and white." That's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's yeah. throwing a little bit of nuance in them in the form yeah. of uh, their own medicine. Yeah, it is their own. Medicine. <laughs> <laughs> making them kind of question their whole belief system, which is uh, well, yeah, it's like legitimately. You've been like a, a, it's a, it's like the the guards of the the you know like the the royal city guards have been like killing traitors, yeah, and then they come to kill you, and you're like, well, I'm not a traitor, yeah, of course, and you're just like, oh, um, you sometimes. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like if you told John Cusack, uh in September of 2023, you go, soon, very soon, you are going to be the anti-Semite of the week <laughs> from a very big Twitter account. He'd be like, what? What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? It's impossible. The like, I'm like the most here. liberal guy on earth. Oh, get away from me. I'm like, you drinking look up, my adrenochrome. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you look up liberal in the fucking dictionary and it's me. How would I be anti-Semite of the week? There's like not even a misunderstanding could get me there. Uh, there's not a chance. Nothing. He would say, oh, as if you just, oh, as if they just randomly pick you anti-Semite. <laughs> like he's the type of guy that would say that other people. Yeah, he like, you obviously stupid. did something to become anti-Semite yeah, of the week. Yeah, of course. Anybody who's the anti-Semite of the week has done something uh, worthwhile. Okay. And I'm never going to do anything. <laughs> I'm not an anti-Semite. I don't have a racist bone in my body. Not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. I'm an anti racist pal yeah exactly look at my twitter handle. yeah look at my yeah exactly all that stuff <laughs> and you go oh, there's one thing i'm gonna say if he pushed you away just as you got close he may have this legitimate phobia so it's it's a girl blog and they've essentially made this phobia and it's called philophobia which is the fear of love but i think it's a bit of a fear of what accidentally for boys the fear of what fear of love oh love no, oh, that's the opposite of you, man. Well, I heard you say love. Love a boy, Danny Polish. Yeah, I heard love. I said the I said it's the fear of love and you thought I said the fear of lub? I swear you just <laughs> said lub. <laughs> If he pushed you away just as you got close, he might have a fear of love. What's lub? <laughs> I feel like you probably brain might be able to pattern recognition that one in there. Maybe. <laughs> Possible. What's love got to do with it? Yeah, he, definitely Black Pope would be a lover. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely it's just funny though that making it a, a philophobia is just like a but it's just like just picture like an absolute dog. Yeah, it's just like the doggiest of dogs. One interesting thing about philophobia, I suffer from. You go, just tell just one. We've been to, we've been together for five years, and you still don't want to say you love me. It's like, babe, I'm a philophobia. Babe, you know, I I'm told fi- you day one. I told you about my philophobia. <laughs> I'm philophobic day one. You know, I've been taking counseling. <laughs> You know I'm in counseling for my philophobia. <laughs> People who suffer from it can still enjoy intimacy. So I can still enjoy intimacy. It just can't be exclusive. Yeah, you know yeah. I'm a philophobia. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ex- you know, enjoy a little intimacy here We can and even there. live together. Yeah, multiple days a week with maybe multiple different partners. I love <laughs> some good intimacy. If I, if I could get rid of my philophobia <laughs> today, I would. If there was a pill that I could take to remove my philophobia. That is, if the intimacy is casual, so your philophobia doesn't act up when it stays casual. Right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it only happens when the girl catches feelings. If it doesn't involve anything too deep, it's the feelings that fucking really, really kick your philophobia into gear. Real high gear. And definitely it doesn't want to have anything to do with love. So the L word definitely gets your philophobia in full ass gear, dude. <laughs> if someone has philophobia, they might have some of these physical symptoms. <laughs> Shortness of breath, fast heartbeat. Definitely if you're if your your chick's finding out about the other chicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You might have some fucking yeah, shortness yeah, yeah, of breath sure and fast <gasps> heartbeat. <laughs> Panic attack, extreme anxiety, <laughs> nausea, irrational fear, crying, numbness, chest pain. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's, that I sounds lo- like all the so we've been together for five years, and I just want to say I love you. I wish I wish I could do this. I wish nothing more in the world. 
Maybe there is nothing more in the world that I wish to you that I can say those words, but heaven forbid my philophobia will attack. I will have a heart attack on the spot. <laughs> Panic attacks at the thought of not being on the prowl. Yeah. No. What causes philophobia? Childhood losses, perhaps. So you actually, they're trying to root philophobia in something else. I mean, isn't this just like fear of or whatever? They're just trying to say some girls might have it too. Yeah. Being a child of divorce, so 50% of people are susceptible to philophobia. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah, we've been together for seven years and you never say it. And you go, I was eight years old when they got divorced. <laughs> and that's where the philophobia started. That was the last time I ever heard the word love. <laughs> <laughs> I was eight years old. I came in. My parents argued. My dad said to my mom, listen, you bitch. My dad came into my room. He looked at me and he said, your mother got fat. There's no, no, there's no easy way to say this. She's a big woman. She's a big lady. She's not doing it for me, okay? He was smoking a cigarette at the time. <sighs> that's when I knew that I was a philophobic. Yeah. I didn't know the word for it at the time. Anyways, your Uber's here. <laughs> <laughs> Panic attacks at the thought of having a girlfriend. <laughs> Mark, uh, just quickly, I know we've sort of mentioned it a few times, but the Mark Cuban thing yeah. is interesting because he's really become like... Uh, he can't, he's like, he can't uh Won't back this. down, I think. He won't yeah. back down. Like, he refuses to lose this thing even though he is painting himself in... He basically keeps painting himself in a corner. Well, like some people are saying he, like, libeled himself because he basically was like... You know, I, I hire based on race, basically. And, and then he's the, like not the built for internet arguing. But did you not see the guy um, from the, like the, I don't know what it's called, like the employment counselor or some shit like that? Oh, I saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically commented on his thing being like, hey, just to, like, uh, just to clarify because he was like no to me i hire based on skill and to me i consider being diverse like a skill right that's kind of what he said and then the like the head of the employment I know, someone was like you uh, equal opportunity commission that's what it was basically said hey i'm the head of the equal opportunity commission and just for the record like you can't do that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and he said something like you know if we had 30 black women uh or whatever like he said tweeted something like that he's like you know if there's 30 black women like don't, wouldn't you think it would be like a good idea to hire a uh, white person Person to for some diversity and then you're like so you just think 30 black women have 30 of the identical opinions and just think the same way like that's essentially what you feel like it's just like if they're 30 black women they're just the same people yeah the only reasonable position to have on that is like from a freedom association point of view where you're just yeah. like yeah i believe like i've always said like i remember i used to do like these um uh like probably like eight years ago i would do these uh videos um, they were like kind of like mini little com like I used to remember like I used yeah, to yeah. direct commercials and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. Right? but they were kind of like um, like somewhat internal commercials not mm -hmm. like ones on TV mm -hmm. but I would do all these commercials and I remember I would like go to these tech companies sometimes and it would be like this Indian dude and you would look at the office and it was just like 100% Indians yep. and you're just like well, is that a problem? You know what I mean? Right. Like a guy moves here from India and then hires all these Indian guys. You go, is that allowed? And I guess the answer is like, what well, either is or it isn't, right? Mm -hmm. and I think that some people are just like, you kind of want to have uh, to some degree, you just like want it to be fair. You know what I mean? Yeah, you want it to be fair, but also like, but I think if people could, you know, you can vote with your wallet. If, if there's a company and you go, I don't like this company. And well, no, that you can't right now because it is against the law currently. What? To to hire like uh, no I'm saying if there's a like company, right now in America you can't just have like all one race like you would have a if you just hire only people of one race you'd have to you'd have to make the case that that was extreme coincidence and then the right. people that weren't hired if there was any indication that you weren't hiring people because of this mm -hmm. you would lose you, that court case you, right you now dude I saw on twice now on Twitter and on uh, Facebook I think an advertisement that was like a Salino and Barnes have you been affected by like uh, right. racism under the guise of diversity uh, interesting so lawyers are starting to be like a hospital chasing this essentially right yeah. and there's probably big money in it because you can sue these companies but I'm just saying like what if, some, what if some company like pre the diversity initiative was just like yeah in an all white city like a factory in some town that's like all white and they go, so yeah, they, we're all white well like, I know the answer to that the yeah. answer is if you don't turn them away for that reason so mm. the, the case is I applied here and I was turned away from my because of my race yeah that's the that's the like case from a legal perspective right, right? 
So if you go, hey, we only have white people here and no black people applied and no Asians applied, only white people applied, it's like, well, then no one has a case against you. Right, right. Right? But if you're like, but hey, if, if you're like, hey, we have 95, we have 100% Indian people mm-hmm. and and now you go, hey, look, uh, I'm a I'm a black guy. I applied. I have a master's degree. This guy has like, under, he's underqualified. Yeah, yeah, no he got question. the job. Then you yeah, have an employment that, that is that, Under the that, way that it currently works. Yeah, and I mean, I would say that that is discrimination. You're like, you literally took a guy who is less qualified because of his race. You're like, yeah, that is discrimination. Under the current law. That just seems like the textbook of discrimination. You're like, you specifically discriminated against Well, the, but the other, the other side of that is do people have freedom of association? So right. law says no, yeah. right? But if, if from a philosophical perspective, you, obviously it's harder to argue well, with yeah, white. I mean, but I, like I said, I go, but like, let's say go, yeah. you go, hey, I'm a black guy and I want to hire all black people like the, yeah. uh, at my bank. Like, I don't think people necessarily are... are uh, have a problem with that? It's just like obviously the it just goes when you do if you say I'm only going to hire white people, people have a problem with, it, and that's where the law started. What about when the sign says no long hair people apply? That would be discrimination because mm, there's a sign, especially if it said no long hair dreads apply. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Under that, but anyways, the the philosophical standpoint, I'm saying if Mark Cuban was like, hey, I'm just like so libertarian on this, I think people should be able to do what I want, I think the free market would sort it out better than these laws. Yeah. He might have like some sort of like a logical coherent argument, but he's saying, no, I agree with the current laws, but I still think I'm... Yeah, there does, and, they're and just I saying mean, that's, that's the thing. True. I'm like, there does need to be, uh, like I would think of it in the case of not a race thing, but a disability thing. Like there are probably qualified disabled people and there would be like, someone would apply and then they're like, you know, fuck man, we're gonna have to like change the bathroom and I'm sure it's happened a million times where someone is qualified for some job but because of their disability people are like it's gonna cost me 300 grand yeah it's gonna cost you all this money or like you know what it's just like it's just i don't want to have to kind of tiptoe around like your disability or whatever it'll just make me feel weird and they like don't and you're like that is unfair yeah i guess like you you know i'm not uh well the question becomes who pays for it who pays well right and oftentimes it is the business Oh, well, why? So when you say fair, it's like that's just like a subjective word. It really is like what is your underlying philosophy, right? Mm. So when you go fair, I mean, some people might say it's fair that you know, like I said in my case of an Indian guy moves here and he wants to just hire Indian guys. Some yeah. people might say that's fair and he has the right to do that, right? And some people would say, well, no, because you know, yeah. I mean, can't the, be here's the problem: the only way you can say it, anything is truly fair is to peg it to the exact breakdown of all, which is impossible. So where they've landed on now is fair as you can't discriminate in the hiring process. Yes. Right. Th- yeah. Because they even said, I think we covered something along this lines. I don't remember what the article was, but I remember reading it and I didn't even actually realize this, but there was like black women specifically wanted their own kind of slices of the diversity pie because what was happening is places were being told, hey, you need quotas for women and you need quotas for black people. And it was all going to guys and white women. And so then oh, black women were like, so we're <clears throat> we got to be a separate. So slice. we actually have to be a separate slice because even when they do it, this broadly and this is essentially this is essentially a case for intersectionality right and this was i can't remember what article we covered it was recently when i was reading it. i go oh that actually kind of does like make sense because then they go they're like okay well, if you subscribe if to you the subscribe to thing, this if you subscribe to the original which i thing, don't really yeah exactly because you know again in a free market i suppose you know uh if, if you're in a free market if you're passing on the better candidate for a racial thing then actually in the grand scheme of things you'll do worse so in absence of 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 the laws that currently exist mark cuban is right uh if if, if he believes the other guy's better if he's like well i believe that this person's better but i guess and they're being uh looked over because of diversity he's correct right and he's saying there's like an intangible element where like you know just having someone who has just a different viewpoint of the world can benefit your business all things being equal and if you think that you think that you're allowed to have your opinion opinion. but unfortunately according to the law like right now opposite opinion you can have that opinion yeah that's the the question the question is you can't have that opinion according to the law yeah so anyways, but yeah, the that that thing with the black women, you go, oh, okay, yeah, because they were just the black women were like, yeah, we're still getting fucked because we're not getting any of these jobs. 
Well, that's definitely what, yeah, a lot of times. I mean, I've always said in comedy, people will go, like, you need to have, like, diversity, and everyone's like, black guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're already playing, like, literally yeah. already. Yeah, you go, I don't need to be told that, because you're just, like, hire funny people. But when we, like, that's why whenever I did my shows, like, diversity was never an issue, because it's like, yeah, dude, it was like, remember I did the diversity thing, it's like, we have we have black guys that hate Trump, we have Indian guys that hate Trump. <laughs> that was literally me, it was like, we have, we have fucking Indian boys, we have fucking black boys, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's like, it was all just, like, dogs, right? Yeah, and exactly, yeah. and you and CBC and is kind like, of like you know we mean women, women too. too. I go well, fucking put it on paper, pal, because <laughs> <laughs> tell it to my lawyer. We'll see you in tell court. it to the lawyer, pal, because we got a diverse group of dogs right here. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Um, okay, one la last thing I'm gonna uh, just address is I thought it was interesting because one of the things we talk about a decent amount, and we sort of went into it last week, but we were talking about um, the difference between some people that want to uh, put their life on the like uh, line for their ideology mm -hmm. and some people who don't. And we sort of have, uh, we've sort of taken the stance generally saying like, hey, don't like ruin your life to, to you know, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. But I think that I wanted to clarify because someone was saying like, well, what about in the case of Jordan Peterson, for example? Sure. He put his, you know, put his uh, life out there and uh, now it made him, you know, made more popular. Yep. And the idea is sort of like, if you follow the truth, you will be rewarded, right? Yes. And I think the addendment, because I'm, to be honest, maybe it could be a little hypocritical because I'm someone who obviously does the, you know, extreme thing, right? Mm-hmm. And willing to sort of put my viewpoint on the line, and obviously I'm doing fine, right? But I think the question is, the real question is twofold. One is like, well, who are you as a guy? And I think, you know how it even with like investing inv advice, like the most important thing is like, what is your temperament? Yeah. So the first part is like, well, which kind of guy are you? And it's like, yes, you're right. If you actually probably added up all the people that did that, like, are you taking a gamble? Mm -hmm. So definitely there's nothing wrong with if you want to be a person that's taking a gamble and you're taking like long shots in life and the same with a comedian you go I would never ne like necessarily tell people you should be a comedian so I think it's almost the irresponsible part comes from telling people to do it yeah yeah for sure and yeah yeah that is probably a, if you want to yeah. if you want to be the type of person that puts it all on fucking black and like yeah everyone has the right to live their also life how you want. we know Jordan Peterson because he's super famous there's a lot of guys who probably did something similar and did not rise to that level and well, exactly and then they're, they're the dark side of this equation you just don't see them because they were they didn't didn't work out for them and, be, and you know the other so that's true and on the second part of that if you're the type of guy and this is kind of where the underlying philosophy comes from if you're the type of guy that likes to live on the edge mm -hmm. you know what i mean you're kind of like a thrill seeker you take chances high risk tolerance you don't really need to be told to do it no do you see what i'm saying yeah yeah. so that's sure. why i'm saying like you know when you're telling someone like i have the same conversation with like alternative lifestyles like you see all these people that were like normalized tattoos on the face and then you see all these people with tattoos on the face being like i can't get a job you know what i mean and yeah. you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, it's like if you're gonna do anything sort of like alternative that's like risky it's like we'll just evaluate like are you that guy and then are on the second part is like are you a fucking talented enough you know in comedy they always say like the opportunities will come are you ready for them right. it's like are you actually ready to be that guy or are you just gonna are you the guy that's gonna like walk into your workplace and give your boss an earful get fired and then your family starts <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and a lot of people are probably not great at like kind of doing some risk reward cost benefit things when they get that tattoo on their face and, yeah, yeah. Really? Are you the next best rum mumble rapper? Yeah. Or are you just like some fucking 16 year old? And it's not always all or nothing, right? No. Like you can test the waters a little bit here and there. You don't always have to jump fully in if you're trying to do anything. Like whether that be, you know, take some stand at work, whether that be, you know, someone that was going to be a fucking uh, quit their job to be an influencer. It's not always all or nothing. Like no. you can you could dip your toe in a little bit and catch the water and feel see how that feels. You know, you don't need to start with the million. You don't need to start with the family fortune on black. No, 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 no. That, yeah, that's true. So I think that was just like an addendum. It wasn't like across the board. It's always a bad idea. It's more just like I think incur. I think telling people like, hey, you gotta mm. fucking always take a stand. Like sometimes it just gets just has people fuck their life up. Yep. But Patreon.com slash the boys cast. We are filming Bugman versus Bugman hot dog. You haven't been fucking trading week. in secret, have you? I haven't done anything. Uh, I feel like <laughs> I feel like that's the type of thing you do. You fucking. I was watching. If anything, it's the opposite. I wasn't eating enough. If anything, dude, I was watching a video about. I a should guy. be. So people training. who don't know, we're doing. A a hot dog eating 
competition on the we, Patreon. We, on the Patreon, we highly recommend you sign up to watch us fucking go toe to toe. As long as an head. extra episode every week, mano a mano as well as. But I was watching this guy who became a YouTube channel. So you have been training? No, I have not been training. I watch what's required to train. This guy was literally would wake up every morning. He made himself the number two competitive eater in the world. He's like, it's not worth it. Almost killed me. He's like, you make no money. Like the whole thing is just like he's like, you do it for the love of the game. This is water. You got to stretch your stomach out. When he does his those gallon jugs of water, he literally will just go and chug one nonstop, a full gallon. And he goes, not a drop comes out. And he goes, I do this like six times a day. So he really loves the game. It, it, well, he's like he kind of stopped because he goes, it's actually really dangerous. I guess. Why is it dangerous? I think just taxing your body like that is and he's like it's dangerous but more importantly he's like y- you don't make any money so like why the some fuck? guys do he's he's basically like the guy kind of relates to what we were just talking about yeah, to be he, honest yeah he's like joey chestnut does and he goes for me or guys with big youtube the, channels the, right fucking yeah, the, you, it, yeah, yeah the youtube channel i think has actually made it more profitable to, to be an eater the that but it's not like the best guys make the most money it's just like the entertaining guys well no joey chestnut, joey chestnut is the best guy but the problem is that that's that you know, there's guys dog. that make more money than joey chestnut though Really? Buddy. That's what the whole At thing eating? That's the whole thing with competitive eating is a lot of the guys don't want to go into the competition because it's bad for their brand to get spanked by Joey Chestnut. Well, the way he described it is he goes, All those other events, like and I think we covered this on this, because that event pays like fifty grand, the Nathan's. Every other Some event, of these guys are getting fucking million dollar McDonald's things to like eat twenty Big Macs. Oh, that I don't know about. But he was like, if you actually enter like the matzo ball eating contest, it's like first prize is a grand. He's like, it costs more than that to get there. <laughs> He's like to literally to train all the food. He's sure. like he's like just to get there to put yourself up. It's like you, even if you come in first place, you maybe break even. That's not a profitable thing. No, yeah, yeah. It's not. But I'm telling you, some of these guys are doing pretty good because they're essentially big influencers now. Yeah, they're big influencers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know there's like Joey that, Chestnut's not the biggest the one. Guy, by the a lemon, long the shot. lemonade guy. He's like this big black guy, and he can drink like a gallon of lemonade in four seconds. You need a something. gimmick. You need to be a something guy. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, so pa- I okay. So neither of us have been training. Patreon. Do you have? Do you have an idea? The boys. Do you have a, actually, we'll, we'll leave it for the Patreon. I was gonna say, do you have an idea how many you think you might be able to get? Down? No, I don't even want to say. Yeah, I literally have no clue. I have no clue. Either. I probably never. Are you gonna do? Three. Are you gonna do two dogs and then wet buns? I think I do or? one dog wet bun. I don't see myself doing two. You doing two? That's your plan? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> You're probably just gonna. I don't think time. Re- this. I don't think just time. Fucking, re- I mean, dogs are sitting there deep throating. I see. I don't think the time really matters. Actually, the I don't time think so limit. Either. I'm gonna be full before the ten minutes is up. Yeah, I think I'll be like <laughs> too close to puking. At exactly. That point, so probably. I don't think time really matters. Yeah, we might need. We maybe shouldn't even have done ten minutes. Maybe we should no. Do ten this. minutes is what the pros do. We fucking do what the pros do. <laughs> All right. Okay. Peace.